If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for, pump, the first, pump, pump. for the first hour or so, Adam, Justin, and I do our normal introductory current events conversation. Here's some of the topics that we covered during that period of time. We talk about ear hair. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Adam's Ew. getting some 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 He's lovely oh, locks man. in his ears. <laughs> He's Did got you hear some me? tentacles in there. Uh, we talk about long eyebrows, gray pubes, <laughs> and the harsh reality of aging. Man, we really covered a lot of a, good topics. It's a sexy, t- uh, sexy episode early on. Yeah. We talk about Trump's Amazon tweet and his trade war with China. Good discussion here. You moron. Uh, we also talk about the condom challenge. Uh, oh. does it, it's not as fun as it sounds. No, no. It, from, brought to you by the same kids that eat Tide Pods. <laughs> yeah, it's okay? very similar. We talk about the YouTube shooter um, and giving people publicity who do bad things. We may think that may actually be contributing to the problem. We talk about the importance of sleep for fat loss and muscle gain. I actually bring up uh, a uh, a study that shows that uh, sleep deprivation redu- uh, reduced fat loss by like 50%. So make sure you get adequate sleep. Get some sleep. And then Justin and I have a nice conversation with Adam. We're trying to sell him mm. on having kids. Yeah. Yeah, they're not doing so well. Yeah. We also... <laughs> we also you wouldn't uh, trust us unless we were real. We also yeah, did a, I mean, a Thrive Market unboxing. They are one of our sponsors. By the way, Thrive Market, the largest distributor of all non-GMO products. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get a free month membership and $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more and free shipping. We actually hook you guys up quite a bit. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, what do we feel about two a day training? In other words, rather than doing your full hour workout once a day, what if you divided that and did two 30 minute workouts? Would that give you better results? Would you get better gains? Would you get faster results? Find out in this episode. Hmm. The next question was, this is a natural bodybuilder who's trying to put on a lot of muscle. He's also eating about 5,000 calories a day. Where does he go from here? Does he just keep eating more calories until infinity? <laughs> like, what you could do that. advice do we give him? That could get expensive. Yeah. Find out in this episode. The next question was, what are the pros and cons of weekly versus monthly fasting. In other words, is it more beneficial to do short fasts every day where you're you know, doing like a 16 to 24 hour fast or is it better to do these occasional long fasts? I've experimented with both. I give you my personal anecdote and Adam and Justin have some incredible input as well. I do a fast fast. Not finally, a, not a fast, fast, fast. finally, last question. This individual is being prescribed antidepressants but they want to try to increase or improve their serotonin levels naturally are there natural ways of doing that we talk about resistance training we talk about diet we talk about sunlight we talk about sleep we also mentioned brain.fm now brain fm is this music that you listen to in your ears that has been shown clinically shown to improve your sleep or meditation or focus or relaxation they actually have different programs we also work with brain fm if you go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump You'll get a discount on their sounds. Game changer. Also, this month, we're actually giving away a program, an entire program. What? For free. We're giving away the No BS six-pack formula. This is a workout specifically designed to build your abs so that they're more visible at higher body fat percentages. That's right. If you build your abs out, they will be more visible all the time. You can get it for free if you enroll in any MAPS bundle. Bundles are when we take two or more MAPS programs, and we put them together like our super bundle, which is nine months, no, excuse me, a year of exercise program, your entire year planned out, plus you get the No BS six-pack formula, you're pretty much set up. If you're interested in MAPS, here's some good information for you. If you want to build maximum muscle and strength, MAPS Anabolic is your program. If you want to sculpt your body like a bodybuilder, a physique competitor, or a bikini competitor, That's MAPS Aesthetic. If you want functional athletic performance, if you want to move like a crazy athlete, that's MAPS Performance. If you want to work out without equipment at home or on the road, that's MAPS Anywhere. Or if you just want to learn how to do correctional exercise, especially if you're a personal trainer, 
Maps Prime and Prime Pro are valuable tools in your arsenal. You can find out more about all of these programs or just enroll at mindpumpmedia.com. Doug, are we hot yet? I think I'm... Uh, yeah. Hot. Well, I, I'm hot. I don't know about you guys. You are handsome, actually. Yeah. Bro, you know that, what do they call you? Hot, uh, hot, hot. The new nickname for you I see on YouTube is the Silver Fox. God. <laughs> Sal is the Silver Fox. Was that on YouTube too? He's like yeah, nimble dude, that's your, that's, and sleek. I didn't even know that that was a uh, This whole time I thought you were compliment. just handsome-ish, but you're not, dude. You're a fox. Silver Fox. Well, I, didn't know what, I didn't know that was a compliment. I get Someone yeah. on Instagram said that to me, and then and I was with Jessica, and I'm like- <laughs> You didn't know it was an insult? Yeah. I had no idea. I'm like- I'm like, is what the hell Silver Fox mean? And then like a you know, nice she way knows of saying you're old. She but knows like you still got some. Yeah, she knows she knows right away. Like, you got the gas, bro, still. The yeah, gas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I said, uh I said, uh, I'm like, what does Silver Fox mean? And she's like, Why? Who said that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who said that? Let me find like, that bitch. <laughs> I'm like, take her out. No, she doesn't she's not jealous like that. I'm like, some uh, girl, you know, said it to me and she's like, Yeah, that's a compliment. I'm like, yeah. Silver Fox? I feel like it's a not it's like I, I feel know. like it's an underhanded compliment. Yeah, it's like a yeah. it's a back back. You know what I mean? Compliment. Like you're like mm. you know you're you're hot for a fat guy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're a hotty right. fatty. Or yeah, for, an old, for an old guy, you're good looking. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got them geriatric yeah. abs. You're like a chubby Brad Pitt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks, dude. Speaking yeah. of speaking, I get that a lot. Actually, speaking yeah. of getting old, Adam, you need to share the. Oh, uh, you put me on Front Street like dude, that, dude. <laughs> oh man, it's oh, a great God. conversation, <laughs> dude. So uh, I have invested in a tool that I never owned in my life what? before. <laughs> so, what is it? Well, I'm driving in the car. So you know it's springtime, right? So the sun's out. Looks gorgeous now uh, outside here in Cali, and. Uh, I look in the rear view mirror. I'm getting ready to take off from my house. Sun's blasting in my face and the light hits me just right. Oh, yeah. And I've got this group of hairs coming out of my Where? ear. Oh. I've never had this in my life, dude. Oh, what the that's fuck? That's horrible. Uh, what the fuck, dude? This is not supposed to happen to me right now. I'm I'm so, old. What's I'm so the happy. evolutionary advantage? I'm only 36, that, yeah. man. I, I, I do so everything happy. I'm supposed to do. Uh. Oh, uh, so, so like you lose hearing, so like you have to like feel people now, right? <laughs> you get your little tentacles out, the, like the, your little feelers, dude. Like, I, wait, you're 36. I thought you were 37. I turned 37 this year. You turned 37. Yeah. Oh so God. right around I that get the age, nose hair. that was my thing. Right when you get on the other end of 36 and you start to get closer to th- 40, weird shit yeah. starts to happen, dude. You get the ear hairs, you get the eyebrow. I got the eyebrow hairs. That oh, the the owl kind of like crazy <laughs> hairs that go away. There's like out. four of them, and they just they they they're like super hairs, and they grow hell long. And I was like, what was I doing? I was yeah, what I, was that? Oh, I was at Easter, and I'm looking at someone. I'm like, God, what the fuck's in my eye? I'm like trying to move, <laughs> and I'm and I, I grab it, and I'm like, there's something stuck here, and it was attached to my eyebrow, and I'm like, that's an eyebrow hair. Yeah. That's really long. Well, you can all rest assured that I took care of that shit. Like, I didn't, yeah. let, that, didn't let it go for longer than a day. It's going to get worse. So you got one of those things that goes in. Yeah, I got one of those little micro tools. the hedges. Yeah, the micro tools, and I t- take care of the ears and, and the nose <laughs> now. Ears, <laughs> bro. Dude. <laughs> what about, it, was, it was devastating. <laughs> what do you, like, devastating for me. You were wow. that upset? I oh. was that upset. It was, you know, it was, uh, and I had to have, like, this, like, check in with Excuse myself. Me, you like, got some cotton in there. Oh, my God, that's hair. It was just because I never in my life have I yeah. dealt with it. And you've all, we've all seen that. We've all had a grandfather or an older uncle or something, right? And he's got the hair growing out of his ear. And you're just yeah. fucking, when you're talking to him close, yeah. it's disgusting. Yeah. Take care of that, dude. Oh, yeah. And then for me to like, because here's the thing I saw it because the sun hit right. I just happened to be looking at myself in the rear view mirror. <laughs> How many days went by that I didn't see it? Well, so we <laughs> noticed, Fuck. we noticed yeah, it, but, we're, but me and Justin were like, <laughs> yeah. we're like, don't tell him. Like, yeah. Let's, Let's humble him. Yeah, Let's just make a little breezy, like, you know, wind. <laughs> behind him watching. what about what about the nose hairs those are those are getting gnarly so too, huh? okay i have this you know on that right so i've got this beard thing right going on right so my mustache is kind of grown out and the way i found out about that is i i it looked like my mustache was kind of fucked up like i had hairs going different directions and so i i was trying to comb them and fix them and i was like pulling on him to straighten it and I pulled and it was like it hurt and I was like oh I hurt my nose and I was like <laughs> and then I like looked closely got one of the, my girls got one of those like makeup mirrors you know because those things are like that'll tell you a lot yeah like, uh, you want to you, you see those chicks mirrors you can like, see the future in those yeah things. you can see the future in those mirrors dude I saw every fucking white head and everything I had on my like freak me out right it's so, like the honey I shrunk the kids kind of I saw I found the where the roots of this hair was coming from it wasn't from my li- upper lip it was from my nostril and it was growing into my mustache Mustache, and because I had a mustache, I hadn't seen it. It fucking messed with me oh, too, man. Terrible, dude. 
A rough, well, just rough wait, week for me. Well, just wait till you find a gray pube. Yeah. That's when. That's when. That's when you know like shit is at the fan. Yeah, you know I, what I mean, that it's I not have. actually gray. It's like like white. Yeah. It's like dead. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's like it just totally just died. It's a yeah. wizard pube. Yeah, is what I call it. it. It is. You know, I've had now. It guides the way. I've had several of them, so it's like I'm still ninety nine percent youthful in that area. Ninety nine. Ninety nine point nine percent. That's a high percentage. Youthful. But I, st- I get a few of them, and I'm just thinking to myself, like, at some point... I'm probably like an 82. You wow, know? you got that many grays? It, they're coming. Dude, yeah, yeah, you're they're, more gray winter's than Winter's coming. You know what I mean? <laughs> winter's coming. <Yeah>. So, <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> winter's <laughs> soldiers are amounting. Hashtag winter's coming. It's coming. <laughs> so my, que- my, my question is, like, first, like w- at what some point they're going to outnumber the, the, the dark ones. Yeah. You just give up? You're you know what's like, crazy? I, you just let it in, go. Until we, I know we talked about this a while back. I honestly didn't even that didn't even cross my mind that that is gonna happen. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I haven't seen a lot of gray dicks. You know? No, just, wow. you well, don't yeah, see you it. have in the gym, mm. in the locker room. Think a- about aliens, all the old dudes dude. washing no. themselves. Like I actually, drivers. I can't picture. You know, I have to say that even though it's in my peripheral, I don't hone mm. in on it. So I haven't like, I haven't really noticed that all these guys. Yeah, you got oh, to you got to stare a little longer. Yeah, yeah. You just pay attention. Yeah, <laughs> that, that <laughs> just, last bit. You know, not just out of the corner of your eye. You really got to like focus. Yeah, yeah I just it just didn't dawn on me that it's like I, a white. And plume. if it did, I just yeah. kind of I think I probably connected it to like they're white all over, so it just kind of it matched the, the drapes matched the carpet. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like mm-hmm. oh no big deal. I didn't it didn't cross. And I'm not gray and yet, so mm-hmm. it didn't really cross my mind. Like oh shit, one day I'm gonna be walking around and my whole bush is gonna be fucking gray. Everything. Yeah, man. Everything. Yeah. I uh, I. Better keep that shit tight. One area, I, yeah, I do. I tighten it up a little bit. You, better, you, better you wouldn't use diet though. Better stop using a guard and going one. That's no, like, I wouldn't. That's like blasphemy. Guard no. free. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't Can you imagine. Here's the thing: you could you could fucking trim the shit out of it and, and with no guard, but because you're all gray. But by the time you're all gray, that also means you're legit old now. Not like getting older, like we are. Like then yeah. you're really old. Do you really want to have a fully bare? Old wrinkly at that point. I'm gonna, area. I'm gonna do like designs mm. and stuff at that point. Yeah, you don't really want to look at the veins and stuff, right? Because <laughs> that is depressing. That's just, just, like, just, just cover it up. Yeah, you know, the, you know? the veins yeah, are becoming like, more, like old. Who's ugly more skin. likely out of the four of us to have an out of control? This guy probably out of control. Bush. One of these days is gonna be like that. Poking out of the front of his shorts. It's not a hard <laughs> stretch. <laughs> yeah. He's doing. Look, a, look at this, dude. Yeah. I, I was. I pulled a pair of shorts out to to wear today. Oh, look at it. Look at this guy. I know. Bro, I just like, I'm like, how did this even happen? I don't even remember. I might have been squatting down to pick something up and whoosh. Justin, I, I do this to every crotch. Justin I own. legit has a three inch gash. <laughs> it's a big one gash in his crotch. Yeah, I'm, I'm, staring, at his, I'm said, staring at his whitey tidies right yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, I had to wear like white uh, underwear. Too. Thank you for not putting boxers who on buys, with that. Who buys white underwear these days? My wife bought. I, I told Does you guys. Did she know that those are only one horrible use? idea? Yeah. Oh, I have two. They're they're my. They're, they stay in the back of the underwear drawer. That's I mean, the, it reveals the emergency. Everything. It's the emergency. Yeah. Like if I wear white underwear, that means laundry's well over yeah. here. Yeah. 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 This is yeah. my last option. Those are the disposable ones. You can't. You can't yeah. wear them more than once. So it's a good contrast. But, like I got going on black shorts with like stark white coming out of my crotch. Yep. Well, here's the thing. Like one part of my body, I actually. Can't wait till it's white, and that's my chest hair. I, I know. I feel like if I have white chest really? hair, and if I'm fit, I just look like it looks I just tough. look like that. T- yeah, like oh, look mm. at that guy over there. He'll, yeah, he's a badass. He's, old, he's obviously old been doing savage. this for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's yeah. what it says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want there. But he's done some war. I'm not trying to get white everywhere. There, you else, know, so. funny you said there is this like respect that you give the guy in the gym. Who's got a physique still? And he's got white hair. Yeah, he's got white. Oh, always. He's like, which means he's he's yeah. north of 45, 50 years old in the gym. He's a badass, yeah. and he's fit still. Yep. Every and, and the gym. young little gym bunnies still like, hey, you know, they're all like nice to him. So. Every gym yeah. I've ever ran or whatever, they're the old fit dudes. Oh, they're maybe the, they get all kinds of love. They're 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 gods. Yeah. Because if you're a young dude and you're yacked and you know how hard it is, it's like you're you supposed know, to be. Yeah, you're like, man, yeah. that dude's fucking awesome. And he's always so. I always. That's why I don't really. You know, I don't really sweat it. I'm cool. Yeah. I'm cool. We getting got, older. We just have to be that guy. Yeah, that's the idea. Like, if you get fat and then you're old, well, then forget about it. Then you're insignificant. So if you're fit and old, <laughs> and you throw money at that on top of it, yeah, 
You're on a whole nother level now. Hey, I meant to ask you. I didn't see you post anything or uh, talk shit about uh, Trump's tweet on Amazon. I thought for sure you'd be all. What do you do with Amazon? Yeah, he was talking shit about Amazon. What look, look it up, Doug. Look up. Oh, is he trying to say that they're not paying their fair share of taxes and all that? And... No, no, no. Doug, look up uh, Trump tweets about Amazon. It'll be trending right He's now. He's pissing me off lately, pretty bad. <clears throat> well, you know what's with, with the tariffs? And well, I was, stupid. I was like literally waiting for you to talk about this because I was like, you know what. I I have an opinion on what what these guys are always doing. Like when you get to the level of like Trump or like Bezos, you have that kind of like fuck mm-hmm. you power. A lot of the, all of us, you know, little people, we sit here and debate like the policies and the moves, and it's like all oh, this and that. And what we don't even realize, like I think half the time, like these are just like fucking billionaires fucking with each other. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's Bezos like and him big don't monopoly board. Yeah, Bezos and and Trump are not like friends. They're not cool. So yeah. Amazon owns Washington Post. Mm-hmm. So Washington Post like just drags Trump through the mud. Mm-hmm. So Amazon is one of the companies right now that's struggling with Facebook, Snapchat, and all these tech companies. Like the tech, the whole tech space right now is hurting, right? Sure. So with all the shit that's coming out mm-hmm. right now, and so I look, I literally look at it like. This is just like how billionaires like throw little fucking jabs at each other. Oh yeah, it's like oh look at this, my buddy, especially when they're down. my buddy they Bezos, who yeah. I don't like, who always talks shit about me through his uh, his news article. Looks like he's uh, struggling right now. He talks like, I'm going to throw a tweet out real <laughs> quick. Gasoline, right? A little a little twenty million dollar punch in the, his stomach. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like well, that's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. Yeah, you know. And uh, but I just wish he wasn't the president. You know what I mean? That was yeah. doing this. Well, Come he was talking. So what he was talking shit about is the post office. I see, I'm we're reading it right now. With you on that. So yeah. he's saying that that the post office loses money because the because Amazon uses them to ship so much. Well, fuck the post office. It, it, they shouldn't even exist. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's a dinosaur. Fucking. It's yeah. super dinosaur. It's, it's antiquated. Sh- it shouldn't fucking, exist. Ninety nine percent of the mail I get from them, I throw in the garbage. And Let's we're be sponsored honest. by you know yeah. mail dot com. And as far as the you, the, the po- you know Amazon making money off the what that's a you guys created that shit. Shut it down then. Yeah. And see what happens. So uh, along the political lines too, did you see that China threw a tariff yep. on soybeans? Yeah. So well, that's, not, it, not that's just, their counter, right? Soy and uh, soy cars and then some other chemicals. Dude, we don't need soy. Well, here's the thing. What's your thoughts on that? Well, it's obvious. Ter- trade wars. Nobody wins a trade war. Nobody. <laughs> anytime we raid, anytime we add a tariff to a product that's coming in here, what we're doing is we're just making that product more expensive for the consumer. So it sounds like a good idea because, you know, the president says we're going to put a tariff on Chinese imports to protect American businesses. In reality, what it means is it's a new tax on a, on a particular you know uh, product. So when you go to the store to buy said product, now it's now twenty percent more expensive. So if they do this to like steel, do you know how much steel uh, is used in 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 our economy? You just raise the cost of doing business by 20% for most things to save American businesses. But in reality, what you're doing is you're just you're taking more money from the consumer to, uh, what's the word, subsidize another business that you believe should be subsidized. The reality is if the consumer thinks that uh, American businesses should do better, then the American consumer just buys American products. And that's it. It, should be, it shouldn't be forced that way. So it's it's no different than a subsidy. It's the same thing as a subsidy or a tax or Do you think that, else. I mean, it kind of seems obvious that that would be the response. Do you think that Trump knew that going into it? I think Trump, uh, I don't know. I mean, if I had to speculate with what he was trying to do, two things. I think one, he's trying to cater to his base, which he's got this base of Republicans who are these nationalistic- um, America. Yeah, and they're, right. and they're economic, I mean, they're economic morons, a, a lot of these people, because- they think it's actually good for the economy. It's good for jobs, not realizing that all they're doing is raising the cost of everything for everybody, which is bad. It's inherently bad for everybody, including American jobs and American economics. But he's catering to them on one. And the other thing I think he's doing is he may be trying to use it to leverage uh, you know, negotiations. Mm-hmm. So he may use it and say, okay, China, I've already raised these tariffs. Tell you what, if you lower the tariffs on our other products that you guys have always been doing, then we'll cut these out too type of deal. But at the end of the day, it's us all paying for it. Nobody wins these things. And if it continues to go down this tit for tat, fuck, man, that's going to kill. Uh, it'll kill economic growth. It'll kill wealth for everybody. It's just stupid. You know how much everything would cost if everything was made in America? Do you know how dumb that is? What a dumb idea that is? People don't realize just how stupid yeah. <clears throat> that idea of nationalism is. If everything was made in America... You would own probably. Do you think we just label it that way though, just to, as a scare tactic for the other side? Sometimes I feel like 
we talk about like these these things that pop up, right? And we debate over like what what they're doing or oh how stupid that is. But I mean, wouldn't you agree that that it's more like chess? Like, don't you believe that pol- politics is more like chess than checkers? Don't you think so? Well, you can play chess all you want, but it's it's easy to play chess with other people's money. Well, no, but I, I'm not. Yeah, of course. And what I'm saying though is like we get in here and we're debating a move like a pawn just got taken out. Mm-hmm. A pawn just got taken out, and we're like, that was a stupid move. You lost your pawn. But it's like that's because we can't see three, four moves ahead because we're not behind the scenes of everything like that. That was killing that pawn and how stupid that may have seemed to you is there's a bishop sliding behind that that's going to put the other place in check. Like, so so here, here's- I, 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 I want to believe that the, the men in the White House and the women in the White House are far more intelligent than, than I am or else they shouldn't be there. And so the, I got to think that- That's it, if you think that their intentions are uh, good. Well, and, and no, true. it doesn't necessarily mean they're always good. I'm not saying that because, so, I mean, sometimes- you know, it's it's brutal. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's always in our best interest, but I, I, I think that when we get triggered by the headlines that the news put out there, like, oh, Trump tweets this and says this, and then also we get all these debates, it's like, we're debating something that is almost like what they want us to look at. They want to distract us with the pawn being killed mm-hmm. so they can slide in behind mm-hmm. and make another move that's 10 times bigger and way more profitable for them and way more Well, important. what they do, they do that all the time with bills. So what they'll do is they'll pass a bill that is like, and there'll be something in it that nobody will argue against. Like this new bill, uh, you know, increases funding for 9/11 victims, people who got you know sick from the dust or something like that. And then in that bill, though, is all these other spending increases and all these other things that nobody ever talks about. Uh, politicians, re- congressmen, rarely ever, rarely read an entire bill before they pass them. Uh, Senator Rand Paul, who I'm <laughs> largely a fan of for the most part. Ten, and, and Justin Amash, who's another guy in the House of Representatives, they'll take a bill and they'll post pictures of every page and say, now you read this and go through it and, and let me know what you think. We just got this yesterday and we're supposed to vote on it today. No way in hell anybody could read this entire thing. And people will just, and they'll just vote yes, no, whatever, not even knowing what's in the bill. Yeah. I mean, the whole system is just, yeah. it's so fucked up and so insane. That's part of the game. It's absolutely stupid. But as far as this, you know, this, this these chess pieces are concerned and playing games like this, like they're playing what he's doing is he's playing with our money. Here's what I would have done. I think he's playing more with our emotions. I think it's like All you said it. it's feeding to it's feeding the into the his pe- his group of people that he wants yeah. to feed into because later on he's going to call upon that. Well, here, you know what I'm saying? How about this move? How does this sound? What if instead of saying, "Hey, Chinese solar panels are really really cheap, uh, far less expensive than American solar panels, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a tariff on them to level the playing field, which is what he said, which in reality is just we're going to raise the price of everything. Instead, what if he said this? Imagine if he said this instead. Chinese solar panels are more are cheaper or less expensive than American solar panels. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to waive all taxes for American solar panel companies so it can be more even. How about that one? Why not instead of adding fucking taxes to everything, why not cut taxes for everything and do that instead? Well, you know that doesn't feed big government. That's well, why. that's right. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, right. Say, that's right. literally saying like I'm going to take a pay cut or we're going to take my my team, my guys, my people here here are going to take a cut for the better of the nation. Which, I, I, I would love to see that. Yeah. I would love to see him say, hey, you guys are, are taxing our cars because this the truth is this, China, Japan, a lot of these other countries do put tariffs on American products to protect their own which again if they want to use their tax money to whatever it actually it's it's it hurts a little bit but it actually benefits uh, anyway because we still get cheaper products stupid they're throwing their own money away so let them do it but if they if they did that and we didn't like it why not just cut our taxes so that the price is less so that you know, when they slap the tariff on our taxes are so much lower that it doesn't matter then have them add another tariff on top of it and try and work their way out of that like I feel like there's better ways of doing these moves. He's just doing these really quick and easy ones. And maybe it's because he has the authority to add a tariff, whereas he might not have the authority to slash a tax. Well, that may require Congress, hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken. Well, so, that's an inter- interesting yeah. point. Yeah, because he does that have the authority. Be a lot easier and quicker. He does have the authority to, as the president, to to add tariffs to different things. But anyway. So what does this really mean, though, for us as far as, like, I mean, I'm not a big soybean consumer, so I don't give a fuck, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so, and I don't mass produce it. Like, who is this really going to hurt uh, immediately? Vegans. Uh, you, no, pro- I mean, <laughs> Vegans, products yeah. products with soy will just co- <clears throat> will cost more money. We'll sell less. There'll be a smaller market for it. We'll produce less of it, and, they're, and, the, and the price will go up. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt soybean farmers. It's going to ho- hurt... American market, it's going to hurt world markets. Uh, how much soy. of that do we require from China, anyways? Like, how much? China is a massive uh, 
America is one of the largest uh, producers of soy in the world. So it's a big, big uh, crop, cash crop for us. Oh, we're one of the number one producers of it. One of the number one producers. Well, if we're producing that much of it, why do we need? Why do we need them anyways? Ch- China. Yeah. China's per- eats the most everything. I mean, the Chinese market is so massive. That's the thing about world markets that people don't really uh, uh, understand is that when you play this game and you try to hurt another country, it's a world market and you hurt yourself. And the larger that other country is, the more it hurts everybody. And China is the second largest market in the world for right. you want them buying all your products. Well, I wonder I wonder which hurts more, right? Did the steel tariff fuck them more or did the soybean tariff fuck us more? The steel it hurts everybody. Everything well no I, I duh. I know that. I know it hurts everybody. But I bet you there's I mean I bet you could almost mathematically figure out who hurts more. And that's why I say I bet you that when he threw this out here, you have to know, you got to be smart enough to know that that's their possibility to retaliate and you're okay with it. Because in your head you're going I don't care if you nail that on it. You're going to hurt us by $10 billion. We're fucking you by $40 billion. Well, it's a net 20 for us, so go ahead and tear up the fuck out of beans. I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit. No, I think it just everybody gets fucked, but I think- No, oh, it, it never works evenly, perfectly Well, not evenly, way. but Somebody, it, what I mean is everybody ends up you know, paying the cost for inefficiency in the market. Well, but, is that true? If it's a net if it's a net win for us by- tw- if, let's just, And I'm using total hypothetical numbers, that, and I'm just, I'm just challenging the thought process here is- you know what? What if that's what it is? It, it hurts America by twenty, you know, billion dollars, but then it hurts China by forty billion dollars. Everybody's getting hurt, but the net loss for us making that power move is it's a, a net gain of twenty. It's not a gain; it's that we lost less than they did. Right, right. So that's a game of attrition. That's how. That's partially one of the reasons. One of the strategies that we use to motivate uh, countries to, to do what we want no, to do. No, no. Well, I mean, here's the deal. Yeah, again, potentially you're, could be you're, that. you're playing with everybody's money again. But uh, it was one of the one of the strategies we used to win the Cold War. It was to outspend the Soviets, and you know Reagan, uh, you know they just ramped up military spending. The Soviets tried to keep up with us. It's one of the reasons why the Soviet Union collapsed is they basically bankrupted themselves with the amount of money that they were trying to spend to keep up with us. But then now we're left with a a, a military budget that's just because it never goes away. Uh, number one, and it cost us a lot of money to do that. Now. The argument can be made that the Cold War was a completely different, you know, situation, and I agree. You had nukes, you know, pointed at each other, you know, triggers ready to be pulled. Like that was a real situation. China, there's no, there's almost no risk that we're going to be in a military, you know, have a, have a, you know, a war with them or anything like that. This trade war, yeah, it's a war of attrition. Who can suffer the most economically before they give up? Type of deal. Everybody suffers when they do that. And here's the deal. Do we want China to suffer economically? Do we want you know what happens to our market if China loses ten percent? The question of their market? is it, the question is is it inevitable? If we're if if we don't have a world leader, you know, and everyone's gonna have different views and they're, they're gonna have different governments that that run and, and, and policies will never always be aligned. And so the question is, is it inevitable that there's always gonna have these disagreements where we don't align and therefore in a sense, to me, this is like war, just war in a different way. It's a, ter- we're not, yeah, it's we're, a trade we're, war, right? It's a trade mm-hmm. war. We're not we're not fighting and killing people, but there is strategy to all these moves. And I think getting hung up on some of the details sometimes is crazy. It would be the same thing if we talked about a huge world war and we were we were debating over the way one soldier fought the other soldier and breaking down the entire war based off of this one interaction between two men when there's hundreds of thousands of people involved in this whole war. That's how I feel about when we talk about, you know, business trade wars and things like that is that there's so many moving pieces to this this war to get hung up on one move or the other and talk at, talk like we are authorities. No, I think it's a, I think it's a part of it, but I also think that uh, this is directly you can see the direct cause and effect. It was Trump adding tariffs on their stuff. Now this is retaliation. It's going to keep going back and forth. By the way, trade wars historically uh, tend to escalate and they lead to not so good war. Sometimes mm. they lead to. Uh, you know, where you start to isolate countries, you start yeah. to ban products. Well, that's what I'm. I'm interested in the motivation. You know, more than anything, like Me where, too. like where, <clears throat> where's his direction with that? Like, obviously, he had an agenda going. To, yeah, to to please, you know, certain people in the party and all that. As far as the nationalism is concerned, but you know, what's the end goal? And like, uh, you know, with with China and and Russia being like these powers, and he wants to be, you know, USA. We we got to be the world yeah. superpower number one. 
Like, what, what does this look like? It's, it reminds me when guys get into big arguments, too, like about a sport like football. Like, I love talking to my uncle who just is like a freaking football fanatic. And as a, as a consumer, you're sitting down, you're watching the game, and you see a play that the coach calls. And it, at home, we're like this. You idiot! That was the stupidest call you've ever done. And I just, inside of me, I kind of laugh because I'm like, you have no idea the, the preparation that went into that that one single game by all the coaches on that team, all the players in there. And for all you know, that failure is setting up a success later down the road because that's part of the trap. And so why would I think it's any different when we're playing at an even higher level when we talk about politics and trade with other because countries? You, it's because you're assuming, and a lot of people do this, a lot of people will assume, especially when it's their party that's in control, is they assume the intentions are pure and good. No, that's this not is, true. I don't think I don't think we all assume that. I don't or at least I don't. I don't assume that. Well, you're think what you're assuming is that it's part of this grand plan that's going to help America and all that stuff. No, 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 reality, no, 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 no. I'm not assuming that it's part of a grand a grand this plan. Be benefiting Trump. It just it just means that I know there's a hell of a lot more than meets the eye. That's what it means. It means that I ha- I have a small fraction of information right now and for me to get too uh, opinionated about it is naive of me to think. It's the same way that, like I said, somebody getting angry at a play call when they don't see the whole vision of the game. That's all it is. And, and sometimes the game may be played wrong and you lose. It, but the so pro- he may play and but lose. But the problem is we don't know what the game is. Right. You don't mm-hmm. see what they're, right. the, the game they're playing. And it's probably safe to assume that the game is to benefit his donors, to benefit, you know, to, to get people from his party to like him. Um, and to benefit special interests. I believe that. Only because, historically, that's how it's always worked out. It's almost never, you know, this is better for, you know, yeah. truly better for the country, truly better for the average person. Do you think in our lifetime we're going to see it all collapse? What? Just, I mean, it's, knowing that what you're saying right now, I mean, you have to know that, that that's not a long-term way to to run a country or for us to, to be successful long, long-term. Mm-hmm. Do you believe that in a, it, it's got to fail eventually? And we're, in, in a sense... We're slowly dying right now when you talk about our debt and the direction we're going oh, yeah. and where we're going with health. Yeah. I mean, do you believe it's inevitable that I think it'll, it'll be it'll- a slow bleed? I don't I don't really see it being like this this immediate sort of catastrophe that is like very visibly obvious to everybody. Yeah. I think that they're just like they restructure everything like as it as it collapses. My my personal belief is that it, it's going to collapse but not because uh, not this catastrophic you know, empire collapsing that causes revolution, all that stuff. I think it's going to collapse because it's going to be obsolete. Mm-hmm. I think technology's de- That's de- I agree with AI think, coming in hot. Well, I think de- uh, technology is decentralizing everything to. It's going to decentralize everything to such a point where government is going to be. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to want government anything because tech is going to outcompete it. Just so look, it, it's going to happen with education. Less and less people are going to put pe- their kids in school. Are going to st- or less and less people are going to pay for education. Uh, it's going to happen. The medical, uh, you know, the, the the medical system where people are going to be able to solve problems through these market solutions that are a lot cheaper, more efficient. It's happening with you know entertainment. It's going to happen with it's going to happen with defense. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to happen with everything where. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna care about FDA regulations when I have a device that shows me what's in my food right now. Why am I gonna even care about that? Yeah. Why am I gonna spend all this money on school when I can have my kid do this thing over here that costs a little bit of money, gives them way better education, way better opportunities? Or why am I gonna worry about money, you know, regulated money when I can use cryptocurrencies that aren't gonna inflate, allow me to buy things without getting tracked, um, seem to be safer? Like all these things, I th- you know, why am I gonna buy these products over here? When I can 3D print them at home, like mm. I think it's going to be so decentralized that it's just it's not going to matter. Meanwhile, you know I mean? you'll still have like ridiculous challenges going on, like the uh, condom snorting challenge. Did, did you, you guys hear about this? Did you hear about what? This? <laughs> did you hear about this? What, dude? A, a condom snorting? Yeah, snort a condom. And then, like, basically, hork it through your mouth, like. So no, no, no. You mean like actually like a, a condom like goes in your nose and you snort the whole snort, thing. The whole thing. Yeah. yeah, that's possible. Yeah, it was like an old yeah. challenge they resurrected from and, uh, from the kids who ate Tide Pods. Yeah, exactly. This is like the next thing from the Tide Pods. Like, what what do we do from there? Can Doug? Where's Doug at? When Doug, yeah, Doug, you gotta you gotta bring me a video up on this. It's I just even, gonna be stupidity. It'll still exist. is this going viral right now on YouTube or what? It yeah. is. 
Condom snorting. You've seen it too. Condom I snorting. Have. What? Yeah. Yeah. How did I not know I, about this? I was this? like, what? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I think hopefully it's not used. I don't know if kids Maybe. are are dumber today or if it's just because social media allows this shit to spread. Because when we were kids, there was oh, some yeah. stupid shit too, but oh, nobody yeah. shared it. Well, yeah. Remember, like there was stuff like where you'd lean against the wall and you'd push on somebody's make someone chest pass and out and pass out. Did you guys ever do that? I do well, remember. No, that. I didn't do that. I, did. you know, I always made fun yeah. of everybody. Did I did. That. I okay. made myself pass out doing that. Really? I remember. Yeah, that. it was really weird. That's crazy, man. The, the condom challenge. The condom challenge. What? Here's how this went viral. Yeah. Oh, so these are like, you know, you ain't no one snorting the gold coin. <laughs> <laughs> that's too much. That's yeah. too much late yeah. yeah. You ain't much. girth. Yeah. You ain't. Yeah. You ain't snorting no one of those. Oh, right. yeah. You're doing one of these Planet Parenthood. You're pulling that out of your mouth. For Planet a while. Parenthood, yeah. 15 year old penis oh. condoms. You know what I'm saying? Like these, oh. that ain't a man's condom. You ain't. Oh, you ain't man. snorting that. Yeah. You're getting the extra small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, so uh, you snort it and you pull it out of your mouth and it's the thing now. But again, I think it's just because they can share the shit. Oh, oh. He's eating Tide Pods yeah, now. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. it, it gained wide internet attention in 2013. Oh, wow. So yeah. it was already a thing before. But now it's becoming yeah, now a it's bigger thing. viral again. Yeah. Oh, it's just yeah. disgusting. Why? Yeah. Is this is the old guy doing this? Now, is this a brand new condom or is it a used? I mean, I, I have to say, though, the this is better than the tie pod challenge. It's, oh. it's better than the tie pod challenge. The tie Someone, pod. Uh, someone's like gonna someone's gonna up. choke. Yeah. Someone's gonna choke oh, and sure. then they're gonna it's gonna get and you know what's gonna happen? Donnie died. Can I tell you what'll piss me off? This isn't pissing me off. You want to snort a condom, fine. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> here's here's what'll piss me off. Yeah, do if, what you want to do. If this makes all of a sudden some fucking bureaucrats like we need warning labels on condoms that say don't snort these. <laughs> oh my god, he imagine that. That's when I'll get mad. Uh, That's when I'll get pissed off. Because there was a whole push for the you Tide can't Pods. Snort. There was a whole thing for the Tide Pods where some politician was saying how you need to ch- you should they need to change the way they look because they look too appetizing. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you what? see that? that just popped up right now? The challenge of... Oh, these are all the challenges that have been popular. Yeah. Did you see what it, they just popped up? I didn't even no. see that one before. Yeah, the Kylie lip. Jenner lips one? Yeah, that's where you create suction in a glass and then put it over your lips to make them plump. You tried this, didn't you? <laughs> no, I didn't. I know. I feel like you tried this. Not my lips. Your lips look fuller lately. You, no. Ooh, you did do that's this. Just my, that's just because they're that way. Yeah. It's just natural. <laughs> Very voluptuous. Yeah. Anyway. Oh that's ridiculous. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Uh, speaking of ridiculous, you guys saw what happened at YouTube yesterday? Was it yesterday? Or no, yesterday? yeah, the shooting. Did you guys see that? Yeah. No. There was a shooter on the campus of YouTube. She's a she was pissed off because YouTube, like her videos, I guess were seeing a certain amount of views, and then they changed the algorithm, so her videos couldn't be <laughs> oh seen my. anymore. This is an outside person coming in onto the campus. Yeah. Wow. And so she went on there and started shooting and shit. She's also a vegan activist. Oh, well. Yeah, she's a hardcore. What does that have to do with you shooting YouTube? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. I just thought it was weird. She's like a professional well, at being angry. Well, dude, it's three strange <laughs> things. There you go, Justin. She's a yeah. mass shooter and she's a female. That's usually not common. She's a vegan activist. I don't know if that ma- even makes a difference, but that's kind of weird. Um, what else? Uh, she was pissed off about their their algorithm. You know, I've seen it all over. People posting yeah. on Instagram now, and the thing I don't like about things like this, I hate that we give light to it. Yeah, because people and you see all these people like I can't believe this, and then we get these marches behind it. It's a huge thing. It's like, dude, this stuff happens less today than it ever did before. Yeah. It's actually but, less in the, in the '90s. It actually happened more often. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It, this it's happening less. More, but what we have now that we didn't have in the '90s was fucking Cameras Instagram everywhere. and Facebook. Yeah. So everybody's a reporter now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everybody's an expert on everything right now. And then when we have something like this, we give light to it. You know what it does? It it allows some kid that some fucked up kid over in some state all by himself that has all he has is connection to YouTube or Instagram or podcasting who now hears about something that he probably would have never found out across the country and gives him an idea now. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, oh, I want all that. Nobody knows who I am. By, I want by, all this by the way, you don't, I hate life already and I, I already was thinking about killing myself. May as well go out with a bang. I don't know if you, you realize this, but that's actually statistically uh, a true thing. Psychologically speaking, they've talked about how the more often something happens, yeah, the, the more often. Effect, yeah, right? it, yes. It, it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's you know it's funny when it comes to like robbing our banks. We don't. You guys know that. Do you guys know? You don't hear about how because many they're not allowed to. Yeah. You guys know that. Yeah. I didn't know this. Are you sure about this? That. Yes. Successful bank robbings do not get reported on the news. Do they happen? Are you all the sure? Time? That's fifty yeah. percent of robberies no. are successful. I have heard about this. You yes. never yeah. hear about them. Yeah. Why was that? I wonder why. Dude, I heard. Don't about- worry. We'll protect our banks. 
You know, I know of three, three lives, offhand I'll already. Lives matter. I know of three already. They didn't catch all the time, dude. <laughs> I know locally banks that have been robbed that I didn't hear about on the news or anywhere anywhere else, but I know they were. It was successful. Yeah, I heard it from. Robbery. I heard it from employees there. Yes, I was like, oh my god, are you seriously? Like, yeah, we've been robbed. So like it's times. just funny to me that we've put things in place. I didn't know that. Yeah, bro. I, are you? Are you? Is it a law or is it that the banks? Oh, I don't know if it's a law. Okay, maybe the banks themselves they just have like an internal. Yeah, and they want to keep it quiet thing. because it kills their their business. Right, right? and yeah. that could be a po- possibility. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not saying that it's something that we've legislated for and it's yeah. a law or anything like that by any means but hmm. i do know that's been in, in effect for a very long time that so there's a bunch of people like out there like point break style you know just coming in for sure yeah. 50 percent of them are successful grass. yes I, I read, grab. it's been a while since i read that stat. i always thought i always thought that robbing a bank was like guaranteed you get caught of course you did you know why because that's the perce- perception that you have. Wow. Yeah. Because you always see the guys getting the stupid bank robber, right? Yeah, yeah. Is on the yeah, news. Criminals are he so robs dumb. the He robs the bank <laughs> with a fake gun and there was five grand in there. What an asshole. Uh, and he gets caught on the way to fucking yeah. Starbucks afterwards. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's they, always like that. It's never. Don't, don't they give you the money with the freaking ink on it and all that shit? Oh, you see, you watch too much TV, I do. dude. Yeah, it's not like that at all. <laughs> it <laughs> explodes <laughs> in the yeah, car. Yeah. Ah, I mean, that's, I'm sure they oh, have situations me. like that, but nah, it's not yeah. like that at all. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah, it's crazy, right? I've, have you guys ever seen a bank robbery? Like in person? Yeah, like ever. Do you, have you guys ever been near one or whatever? No, I mean, 17 closed down because they- Remember like, that one? They, that yeah, they were deal. driving away and they That's, still didn't they got into them. Yeah, they got into a gunfight with yeah. the cop. Cops were killed and, even, and still- and they, they still they didn't away. catch them. So my shit? So my, half my family works in banks. My brother has actually been robbed twice in his bank, in the banks that he's worked in. So no two times, Yeah, two times he's been in a bank. And you know how bank robberies usually happen? It's, a, it's, a, it's just a no. Like a guy will walk up to the to yeah, the teller. I want this much. And they don't. It's not, it's not like the movies where like everybody get down. They don't do any of that shit. They walk in. They no, hand those a are note. the guys that get caught. Yeah, because they follow the movies. They'll hand a note, and the note will say like, you know, give me a hundred thousand dollars. I have a gun. If you don't, whatever. And they're instructed to do exactly as right. they say, mm-hmm. and, and don't make any sound. And they hand over the money. They leave. And then afterwards, they're like, we just got robbed. So the both times my brother's been in a bank that got robbed, both times. He found out they were being they, they got robbed after the guy left. Wow! Because then the person will say, "We just got robbed." You know, the guy just asked for money or whatever. Right. And nobody will know what's. That's happening. why they have a silent alarm, right? That's why they have the little button that they hit when underneath the counter. Right? I was so my my old studio was right next, maybe like three doors down from Chase Bank or whatever, and uh, it got robbed while I was there. And I'll never forget. I'm like training clients, and then I see hell of cop cars just roll up to the bank. I'm like, what? And the cops come over, and they're like. You know, do you do you, do you guys see anybody walking this way or whatever? I'm like, what just happened? They just got robbed. Had no idea. Right next door. See, I bet you all those got away. Yeah. You think they all got away? Yeah. Well, what, what, do you remember what happened with your brother? Did you ever remember what he said? Like, oh man, let's just print some more money. No, it's a good question. Yeah. I don't think he'll know if they got caught or not. Yeah. I don't want. I wonder if they would tell him. Sure, you, sure they would. Sure. Oh, well, maybe not though. Maybe that's part of the, how they protect it, and they don't they don't let people they don't know. Say anything. They don't say anything. You know, I don't mm. know. But I, I just find that fascinating that. Something like that to protect the banks, to protect the money like that. We, we've we put either systems or laws or things in place to make sure that happens. But then when it comes to shit like this, you know, it's like... Well, there are there are laws now. Um, if you sue a uh, vaccine manufacturer, I don't know if you guys knew this. If you sue a va- vaccine manufacturer, that they have to keep it uh, quiet. And uh, if you win, it's kept very quiet. And there's a specific laws around this to protect the vaccine companies because wow. the government has deemed vaccines so important that they don't want people's opinions to be swayed, you know, swayed or whatever. Yeah. But no, this is legit. They don't want public I, I, hysteria. I don't know all the details, but it's actually true. I've actually looked it up. Wow. So there is some kind of funny stuff like some that. Some shenanigans. Right? Out yeah, there. a little bit. A little bit of shenaniganism. Ah, shenanigans going on. So anyway, always hey, agenda in my opinion. Hey, so check this out. This is this is uh, has to do with health, but it's a study that just uh, that I read the other day. It's a cr- uh, randomized controlled trial. It was published, I think, in 2010, but it's very interesting. Somebody posted it in our forum. One of the things I love about our forum, by the way, is I love our forum. A lot of the studies, probably a good half of the studies that I talk about on the show. I see on the forum now. Yeah, people will post them. Then I'll. Re- they're finding them at the same time. They're fi- No, no, no. They'll, they'll find send them. them to us. They'll find them. They'll post it in the forum. Yeah. I'll read it in the forum. I'll be like, oh, cool. I should talk about this on the show. Yeah. So it's becoming the great resource for. There's some smart people in there. There's a few people in particular on there who, uh, what's his name, Joe uh, Tallarico, Joe Bag of Donuts. Remember him? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blogs for, blogs yeah, for he us. Does some blogs. He, blog, awesome he, was, blogs. he blogged for us for a little while. Yeah. So he likes to show send me studies, and he posted this one. And it's a study that shows that insufficient sleep undermines dietary efforts to reduce uh, body fat. 
So in this study, they had uh, individuals either sleep for eight and a half hours or five and a half hours a a night. The people who slept for five and a half hours lost half as much body fat. Wow. And and lost 60% more uh, fat free body mass. They actually lost what, the lean body same, mass. On top same of- diets, same same regimen, everything. Wow. It, uh, pretty much, absolutely, pretty much. So it's pretty interesting how sleep can affect the body. I mean, ability. obviously, there's some variables in there that make a difference in the individual variance and stuff like that. But that drastic of a difference is that's crazy. Substantial. Yeah, fifty five percent more. And they also noticed, of course, they were hungrier. They craved different foods. Mm-hmm. Um, they probably, I mean, you don't feel as good, so you don't move as much. So many factors to consider, right? Well, yeah. It goes back to, I mean, we've been saying this for a long time on the show yeah. that it's Common one of those sense. It's one of those big rocks, right? It's like before sleep you, is like number top right three. before you go over and invest in the latest greatest supplement or pre workout or you know whatever breakthrough thing that we have right now. Like, get rid of the ones that are probably making a difference of fifty percent. Yeah, crazy. it's like it's like you never allow yourself to get balanced again. You know, like having sleep allows everything to kind of reset and then you get you know your, your performance definitely is affected i wish don't. i wish i was as aware as i am now about sleep when i was in my 20s mm-hmm. i wish because yeah. i know what i accomplished in my 20s i know how hard i worked and how i could fucking do what go crazy yeah, imagine if you're just trying to be efficient at it imagine instead. if imagine if i un- understood the the importance of actually getting good quality sleep because it's not like i can't like like today if i wanted to if i wanted to i could go five hours a night and fucking drive through and take a bunch of stimulants and do all that stuff it's just i'm so aware now of the difference yeah that i make it more uh, of a priority now of course i am older so i'm probably not as i can't get away with it like i used to but if i knew that in my 20s my god i would have made first uh, of all, know, the he, gains i would have made would have been better hack. the really. obvious side of it is think about this like everybody knows it's like everyone's had a, a day where they didn't sleep right everyone's had a, something that kept them up for 24 hours think of how you felt the next day right everybody oh, yeah. knows that like brain fog awful groggy yeah, and dude. then you just fucking crash so what makes us Stimulants think for days. that that's the ex- that's the extreme version right very few people are going obviously no one's going every single day not sleeping because you would die right, right. so but that is a small like example of look what happens when you just don't for 24 hours when you don't get sleep how the body like how it feels it just feels like you got hit by a train right well then what makes you think that it's not just yeah. you scale that back you know you missed three hours or you missed one hour like it may not feel as dramatic but you it's that, that detrimental adds to, up right it's that detrimental to the body and look at it because it, we see it in that exaggerated form when we miss it for 24 hours what makes me think that every time I miss 10 minutes or 20 minutes or an hour or two hours, that it's not detrimental to my my success and uh, of my health, it's, right? It's when you when you lose sleep, when you lack sleep, you're inducing that fight or flight response in the body because you you, you want to stay awake the next day. Evolutionarily speaking, of course, this makes sense. If you had a terrible night of sleep, the next day you still need to have energy and stuff to hunt or to you know gather food or whatever. And so the de- what happens is your body puts you in this state of fight or flight by increasing stress hormones like cortisol because cortisol gives you energy. Cortisol is the hormone, by the way, that wakes you up in the morning, or at least it's supposed to. Cortisol gives you energy. In the short term, this is a good thing. You want that boost of cortisol if you're tired and run down, especially if you need to get some, you know, you got to hunt or you got to find food or you got to get shelter and that kind of stuff. So that goes up. Catecholamine production goes up to keep you wired because these are all adaptations that your body has to uh, to compensate for the lack of sleep. But that's okay in the very, very short term. If you prolong that and you consistently maintain that fight or flight response on a daily basis, well, we know what that can do to the body. I mean, studies show that chronic sleep deprivation shrink the brain, actually cause the brain to wow. start to kill itself a little bit. So it's uh, sleep deprivation, by the way, is connected to pretty much every chronic disease you can think of. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, in- it increases the the chances of getting almost all almost all chronic diseases that they've done lots of studies on. Everything from diabetes to Alzheimer's to autoimmune diseases. Every single one of them, lack of sleep makes worse or accelerates. So it's just one of those things that is it's at the top 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 of the list. And if you're trying to burn body fat and build muscle, and you're like, you know, I don't even care about my long-term health. Let's say you're don't young. Don't have a kid. Yeah, exactly. Don't have a kid. My <laughs> it's God. not good. It's not anabolic. What's well, that like? For, I, oh, God. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not getting that at all. How's your, how's your buddy? What buddy? Oh, my buddy. Oh, just that's right. talk to yeah. him. Yeah, I don't talk to him very much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, Weird. Yeah, no. Yeah. He's you know he's definitely uh, not sleeping very much right now. And, uh, you know, it's funny you brought my buddies up right now because I actually had something I was going to share with you guys that I, uh, along the lines of getting old. You know, we're talking about the hair thing. 
So I, I out of the so I have two best friends you've heard me talk about on the show a lot that we go all the way back to childhood. I mean, they're like family to me. These are my brothers, right? So I would do anything for them. But we've all grown and gotten older and we have different things that we're into and they tease me a lot because I'm the one who keeps hanging on to youth. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I just I wanna still do the athletic sport. I wanna snowboard, I wanna wakeboard, I wanna play basketball still, I wanna be I wanna do these things. Like I, I still wanna dress in style and be hip and things like that. Like my buddies have just cashed in on all that shit <laughs> fuck it all you know what i'm saying they're like, yeah, yeah the, the jeans and the white t-shirt every single day don't give a fuck about style Polyester suits fashion yeah. to quit all real sports play things like golf and fishing like i mean this is with the direction that they're going and so we have a group thread right that we're in and what we do still have all in common is we're all big sports fanatics so we do have our sports teams that we we talk about but like i was looking at our thread and it's just it's turned into this home improvement thing so they're on this like kick of like it's so cool to talk about you know remodeling their yeah. bathroom you know what I'm everybody's saying? like al borland oh totally dude yeah. or building like a, a fucking you know this new like shelf you know yeah. it's just like super cool and they, and we they share we share pictures on our thread all the time yeah. and i got nothing to contribute to the this. worst is that <laughs> we got all these ideas on pinterest yeah totally like, dude my, like, did you just say that out loud my boys uh, man, card. i fucking love them man and i it's it's cool that that that's where they're at in their lives and i think they're it's totally awesome and i see that um i'm sure there'll be a time where I get off on that stuff, but right now I just that's not my thing, dude. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not on my free time on the weekends, like tearing my bathroom apart and rebuilding all the way. Like that's, and I don't know if it'll ever be me. Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever be that guy. I you're just, gonna, you're gonna, you're when when it's time. I dude, do that out of necessity. I, oh, yeah, you, you're gonna embrace it so hard. I can't wait to see it. I'll be the opposite. Oh, bro, I'll be like the second, man, the really? second you have, you're a gonna kid. be like car wood carving. <laughs> like I guarantee it. Bro, Adam's gonna be like a wood carver. You watch the second he yeah. has a kid and you know gets his house and all that stuff. He's gonna be coming in here with the baby born on. <laughs> oh, I want to just connect with the baby today. Yeah, mind dude. If he sits in here. He's gonna while be wearing little yeah. like Jordans. Oh, well, feeding the yeah. baby. Where I won't debate, which will be great. I won't debate you on that part of me because I do know I see how I am with my dogs, right? And I know that something that's a living, breathing being that came from me, I'm obviously gonna feel yeah. even stronger about than the way I and I treat them like on another level as far I treat them like humans. At least that's the the or like a kid. That's oh yeah, the, you're gonna be super dad for sure. Right, so I'm sure when it comes to the dad thing, I will be that asshole that does take his kid around all over the place and you know oh, we'll, tries we'll to be love super it. dad. So we'll love it. Well, yeah, because you guys will be like, ha, I know what he's yes. going through right now. No, yeah. I love it. Like, because no, I know like, be part wait of the, till you hate that little team. shit in two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna come in with like throw up on your shirt. <laughs> what happened to your shirt, bro? Oh god, don't say that. Morning breakfast. Throw up on my sneaker game. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, yeah, so was, you haven't talked to him about how, how good his sleep no, is? No, we have a little bit, and they, you know, they're, he's not sleeping very much right now, and his life 100% is revolved around the kid. But I, I mean, again, he's like a brother to me, so it's mm -hmm. like I have, a, I have a, you know, a niece and a nephew coming, you know, so. I would say, I don't know, Justin, if you agree with me, the lack of sleep is probably, probably the hardest part. That's the one. I think so, huh? Because it, it's a whole life adjustment. You know, you just know you're never getting it back. And they say it's what, like it's <laughs> why well, yeah. it takes a long time to come to terms with that. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Well, it's what like, do you ah, what do you think is? I miss it. What do you think the time is? You, I've heard guys say six. The first six months are like rough, and then after that, it's easy. I've heard some guys just say the first month. No, is it rough. never gets easier. I mean, it's it, it's rough, rough. It never gets easier. Beginning. No, get the fuck out of here with that. Well, dude, it's get out of here, dude. Change it, dude. All it's right, just dude. like even having a puppy, dude. Like you're right, dude. pissing on your floor yeah. and changing it's, diapers. It's a lot different than a puppy. Yeah, we're going to tell you that right now. Well, I believe that, but you mean to tell yeah. me it doesn't get easier? I mean, yes, in in scale. Yeah, right? in some ways it does. Scale? What do you mean? You get I five? mean, it's not like you are right now. Okay, so this well, this yeah. won't exist anymore. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, this that. this thing. Well, even that now, you have in your day, even now, when my daughter, my kids are with me, you guys are not selling me on the well, idea no, at, no, I, I, at all. No, we're trying school. to build this like uh, idea that's yeah. that's real. No, listen, my kids were really good sleepers too. Really, really good. We did mm -hmm. a good job with, you know, when they would go to bed, if they cried, we would let them cry a little bit just to make sure. And a lot of times they fall asleep. I think a lot of parents make the mistake of like constantly bringing the kid in the bed all the time, which is a big mistake, no, especially with the partner. you got to let them cry it out. You, you let them cry a little bit and let them figure it out and give them a little bit of time because a lot of times they just, they'll just go to sleep. Sometimes they won't and you got to go in there and figure out what the problem is but even now like my youngest is eight still you know when i'm with them maybe one or two nights uh, one or two nights out of the nights that i have them over a course of a week or so i'll still get the yeah. you know in the in a room i hear her Papa, Papa, yeah one Papa, little and voice and it'll just yeah. be like them like having a dream yeah and then what exactly and yeah. then what happens is i go in there because i'm yeah. all worried yeah how are you doing honey everything okay good you know kiss hug okay here's some water can you get me this okay i get the then they go to sleep 
But then as the dad, because what happens when you hear their, their voice, like there's certain noises that will not- Yeah, now an up. alert has gone off in your brain, and yes. so now you probably can't sleep very well. It's a response. It, right. it, and, that, and this might be just my experience too, but yeah, like so that one time- uh, my youngest, he swallowed a marble like, oh, in the middle of the night, scary. right? And like, I, dude, he was like, I mean, we had to get take him to the emergency room. Anyway, horrible. So ever since then, like, there's just like any noise will set me off in the middle of the night that like it sounds like something in the air even, dude. I'll get up and I'll just, ah, like karate chop my way downstairs. It, <laughs> I'm fucking, it's crazy. Like, you, you, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Like until he's like... Maybe a teenager, I think I'll probably be like cool again. Nah. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Probably probably not. <laughs> yeah. You know when you won't sleep when they're a teenager? Uh, when they're out. <laughs> when, they're, uh, <laughs> when they're sneaking boys into their room oh, or sneaking no, girls. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. Stop it right there. Yeah. Don't put all those ideas <laughs> out there. God damn yeah. it. Dude, yeah. I, that so the, the biggest challenge I think I'm gonna have is when they both start dating. I think that's when I'm gonna have the biggest challenge because I know how that can be, you know, with teenagers and all that stuff and you know, if my son gets his heart broken or if my daughter does, or if they want to start having sex or they want to start experimenting and, you know, cause they're out of the house. I, I think that's going to, that might invoke old school, uh, Sicilian Sal to come out <laughs> a little bit, which is not good. It's not good parenting. I can, t- I know it logically, but if it comes, it, it might come out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It might. Want- we were actually having this conversation the other night. We were watching this movie and I don't remember what it was, but this girl was like arguing with her dad and she runs out of the house and like jumps on the back of a guy's motorcycle. And she's like, you don't understand me. And then they ride <laughs> I'm off. I'm out of here. And like the dude, the- <laughs> yeah. And the dude's like, oh my God. obviously a Did fucking- Did that make you want to cry? Bro, like, he's oh. obviously a fucking loser riding right. off with your daughter. Yeah. Here's the funny thing, by the way. It's a horrible visual. Here's the funny thing. 20 years ago, I would identify with the good guy on the motorcycle. Be like, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. I'd be the one taking the girl yeah, away. Get about it. Now I'm looking at the like I'm I'm like feeling for the dad. Like, oh my god. Yeah, like, so I had this conversation with Jessica, and she's like, "How would you react to something like that?" And I'm like, "Well, I've thought about this actually. I've thought a lot about this. <laughs> and what I would do, just kill him because you can't. Like, yeah, yeah, you can't do anything. You can't do anything to your kid because then they might rebel even even further, no. and they're old enough to fucking run away or do something crazy, right? So. What I would do is I would do it in such a sneaky way, like I'd wear a ski mask, mm. and I'd scare the <laughs> fuck out of the guy so bad, ski mask. and I'd be like, you know, you know, so and so's dad sent me. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Just shoot him in the foot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just scare the <laughs> fuck out him of him. The and if you come back, we'll kill you. I have your address or something like that. Yeah, you yeah, gotta so. mentally like just torment yeah. him. No, I'm, like, I'm find I'm, him at work. I'm mostly joking. Yeah. Mostly joking. No, 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 you're not. I forgot I'm being recorded. I right would now. do the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this would be used in court one day. Sorry. Yeah. Bring on the bird, Doug. Before we get going on this, we do have a Thrive Market box. To yes. Open. Yes. Oh, we haven't I done missed these while. boxes. I want some gifts. I do feel like it's been a while. Dude. Why has it been a while? Is there a reason Is why there we. Is there any peanut butter in yeah, there? Yeah, we, just, uh, we took a little hiatus. Butter. Thrive Market restarted their contract with us here in April. That was a power move by Mind Pump right there. There wow. you go. You better pay us our money or we're not going right. to open we're your boxes. You're strong. <laughs> you. It worked. Hey, no, we keep ordering the boxes anyway. We've got a few stacked up here. But uh, there's a few factoids I wanted to share with you well, about no Thrive Market. It's an interesting company. 70% of Thrive Market catalog cannot be found on Amazon. Wait, wait, wait. 70%? Wow. 70%. So you can't find most of these things on Amazon. That's exactly right. Like, well, you mean the actual product or products like that? Is that what it means? No, the products. The, the actual product. Like oh, the yeah. brand or whatever. Right, because everybody- Oh, like, that's fascinating because Amazon has everything. Well, I had, cl- I had a client- They don't have 70% of what- Yeah, no, I have a client has. that shops- Apparently not. Through Thrive and stuff like that, but then she was looking at stuff through Amazon. She said that she couldn't find some of the things she was looking for, so that makes a lot of sense now. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. And it's actually the largest retailer in the country- that sells exclusively non-GMO groceries. Yeah, the, the quality of their stuff is on another level. I yeah. swear to God. And then the prices on top of it. I, I Honestly, honest to God, before we got sponsored yeah. with them, I don't know how I did it. I know. It changed Here, all uh, my grocery shopping. Yeah. yeah. And then one more is that all packaging boxes and inserts are made from recycled paper and are recyclable, 100% zero waste. In fact, they're the first company in the country to go zero waste. Oh, really? The first? That's, that's fascinating. Yeah, you know, so forward thinking. I, you know who's going to buy them? Amazon. I bet you. They'll tr- yeah. They have to. Uh, yeah. You know, I, my, uh. I speculated when we first started all this that they're going to be Amazon's biggest rival. 
I think that they're establishing themselves in the space faster and better in that specific space that Amazon's still piecing that together, like with the the buying the whole thing. Yeah, well, I hope and, not. I want I love competition. No, yeah, I think it'll I know? think they'll thrive. Th- th- how funny is that? I think they'll thrive. <laughs> they'll thrive. <laughs> yeah. cool. Like a market. Yeah, no, I think I think they're gonna thrive. It's a I think they're, name. I think they're gonna do well. I think they did such a good job with their model, and I think they're so far ahead of Amazon in j- that specific space. That they'll become like it'll be Pepsi and Coke. All you know right. What well, saying? what did you get us for? What did you get? Well, us for I just wanted to say one thing. I got to thinking about how to order from Thrive. Of course, you're you're ordering from your home, from your computer. You don't have to go anywhere. It gets sent to you in a box, but everything's recycled, so there's no waste at all. It costs a lot less money than retail, mm-hmm. and uh, we have a great hookup for you as well. So I I. I guess my question would be, why wouldn't you do it? Right, right. That'd be yeah. my, my number one question. Calm out, Doug. Doug, the closer. Yeah, yeah. No, closer, yeah. dude. Why, why aren't you pitching? Your family's going to die. Why not? Oh, yeah. dude. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's hard closer. Yeah. Wrong commercial. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was for... Uh, yeah, that's life yeah, insurance. Life, life yeah. insurance. <laughs> my bad. My bad. Stay with me. All right. What do we got Doug. here? So, anyway, we have a lot of requests for snacks around this place. Oh. What is so, that? Let's, oh. let's pass these around. We got no, I'm some not. cashews. We got... We got macadamias. Oh, you're the no, I want the macadamias. I want cashews. Uh, okay. Cashews. cashews. We got more we cashews. Have peanuts. Oh, oh you guys like peanuts. sorry, dude. <laughs> we got so many macadamia nuts. You probably go through those the most. That's I'm sad. going nuts. Anyway, <laughs> nice. Justice. This was the yeah. nut box. This was basically this nut sack box. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Doug's been hanging around. Sounds with us delicious. Too. Yeah. There's a lot of- Somebody oh. filled that whole box with nut. And yeah. one last thing. Oh, you got your dark chocolate. Yeah, yeah Thrive Market sack. now has dark chocolate. We, we know who those are for. Oh yeah, yeah. you know it. I'm gonna. There, open that's soon. you know. Here's a little a little fun factoid for everybody that listens. Like that's something about Doug. That Doug always takes dark you, chocolate. We will. I don't care where we are, where we're traveling. I can guarantee you, eighty like percent cacao. D- yes, Doug has some dark dark chocolate in his bag. Have you somewhere. seen him eat it before too? When he does it? Oh, he's he's feet, all like, sneaky. He like, hey, takes it takes out. Takes little bites the corners. Yeah, yeah. I'm like a rat. <laughs> we got some seriously dark chocolate here. Eighty-five percent. Is this the first time you're trying their stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, first be time. And then this one's ninety-five percent. I'm very curious. Wow. Whoa, that's that's hardcore. That well, we hardcore. know that you are the dark chocolate connoisseur, so you can yeah, you give us to. the feedback on that. Yeah. Absolutely. Give well. us a report. being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quee-quad. All right, our first question is from Chuckalicious. <laughs> How do you guys feel? I don't feel- know why that's so funny. <laughs> How do you guys feel about two a day training? How mm. much more does it enhance results, and why and how would you implement it? That's a uh, Arnold. Right? Back in the day, man, the double split routine. They I, ran, I ran it. Yeah. I ran it for a long time. And did I, you really? And I revisited it when I competed. Uh, my, when did you run it? When you were younger? At the, when you yeah, the when gym? I was really young. When I was reading Arnold and stuff like that, mm-hmm. same stuff. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, that was a big deal. We used to we used to even split up. How nasty is this? We used to split up like quads and hammies in the same day. Knock, crush your quads oh. in the morning. Yep. Come back and destroy yeah, I just your. Still want to walk? For yeah, the next dude, just days. stupid, Can't do right? That. And it, here's the thing: where I, where I I think as I got older, I I think there's a place for this. I think if applied correctly, there's a, a, a great strategy in it. I think it can be uh, an incredible tool. Um, what, I, what I know now, though, about using it and how I used it when I got older was, I think, the right way. And the way I used it when I was younger, I think, was the wrong way. Um, and when I was younger, I was just I was looking at just the training more and more and more. The more and more and more I trained, and I just just to go harder, right? To go harder on myself versus yeah. really methodically thinking about like where's my nutrition, where's my movement, am I feeding the body enough, am I giving it adequate recovery, am I programming correctly? It was just more get, get more in, right? And so I think this is a mistake that some people <clears throat> do is they see somebody, you know, some bodybuilder guy because that's again when I used it later on that does these double splits and you see his physique and you're like, fuck, that must be why. Cause he comes in the morning and then he comes again in the evening. That's why he looks that way. Well, 
why I did it when I was competing was because it was an easy way for me to increase volume. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a very easy way for me to look at a body part after a, after I got scored from my first show and the judge say, hey, Adam, you know, if your back was better, you know, you would have placed better. Okay, cool. So I'm not going to change much of my routine except for the volume of my back. Like I'm going to increase the volume. And an easy way to do that is to come back to the gym later on in a day when maybe you did a different muscle group or and then to add that into my routine. It's an easy way for me to methodically add volume by adding and i wouldn't even do every the only single. real benefit to this uh, at all is really just building up your volume like uh, other than like because th for an athlete i mean we'll do double days like sometimes like it's practice but it's really just like you split it up so you're more working on your skills versus like uh you know you're working like a, a regular practice with everybody sort of in the morning mm -hmm. but so it's like you can accomplish more if like you're super focused on uh, being stage ready or you know whatever the, the the goal is but you do have to be very yeah, careful you, of ramping yourself up to that point. you you bring up a great point that's actually true too I, I mean as an athlete when I was playing sports as a kid like you know we would in the morning time it would be conditioning and and you know ball handling drills and things like that and then in the evening you were training and lifting so you could argue that that's a double day in itself too right and so if you're playing a sport and you need to be strong and you need to have good endurance, um, and you have to have good skills, I could see a lot of value in a double day, which, you know, speaking to the athletes, uh, again, that uh, as, as a bodybuilder, I see a, a lot of value in doing double days. I see a lot of value for someone who's competing at the professional, competing at the highest level, just like a sport person. If someone played an, a an athlete, I can see value in these double days. For the average person, yeah, not much. the average weekend warrior or the kid who just wants to put some muscle Probably on idea, or either. the lady who wants to burn some body fat off of her, not a good strategy. It, it, there's there's a few things to consider when you're looking at uh, new workout programming. Uh, one of them is the effectiveness of the of the workout, but the other one is also how likely is it that you'll be able to maintain this, excellent, this program? Excellent point. Um, and how convenient is it? How unlikely is it? You know, all these are all factors you need to consider. And as personal trainers, we have to balance this all out. So when I would train a client, many times. We didn't do the absolute most effective workouts because I knew it was just unrealistic for that particular client. So I had to figure out within their frame of right. when they can work out, when they can find the time, what's going to be what they're going to be most consistent with. Then within that, I would design the, the most effective routine. So that being said, if we're looking at pure effectiveness, just pure effectiveness, and you have all the time in the world and it's not a problem and whatever, splitting up your routine is it's, I mean, studies show is, is great, for, especially for cardio. So they've done studies on this where they'll have people do 60 minutes of cardio in the morning or they'll have someone do 30 minutes of cardio in the morning, 30 minutes at night. And splitting it up increases fat loss. Uh, people tend to feel better, reduces the stress response. Uh, obviously, I think the longer you go, the more you get that stress response. When it comes to resistance training, I also love it. It's just super inconvenient, but I also love it. Heck, trigger sessions yeah. are done multiple times a day. If I could do my full body workout and split it up over two workouts, mm -hmm. I now I've never done this by the way. Okay, oh, I so would speculate that would be better. I would speculate it would be I would, a better. I would 100 percent think yeah. it would be better. I think you saying you could that, do like the, 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 the with splitting that. the same workout. I think splitting. The, I, we talked about this not uh, maybe about a uh, six seven months ago, and I think I and I kind of played with it for a while. I don't know if I told you guys this or not, but you know I'd go do a set of legs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then we'd podcast, we'd do something like that, then I'd come back and do you know a couple sets of chest, and then, and I would throughout the day I would just keep similar. Yeah, like if it if it's if it adds up to be the same that I, if I were to dedicate a whole hour. Hour and mm -hmm. I could spread it out through all the day. It's mentally easier too. So like I, I just focus on squatting, you know, for whatever, like I was allotted, whether it's 40 minutes or, you know, whatever the time was. And then later on I'm, I'm hitting, you know, overhead press or, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm just doing something specific for that time period where I don't feel like I'm all over the place trying to cram it all in. No, I think, I think it would be super effective. That's my, that's my personal opinion. Now I've messed around with some of the stuff, but mainly, mainly around, focus sessions or trigger sessions or like, here's what I used to do. Um, and if I were ever to like really focus on getting the most ripped and most fit that I could possibly get, I'd probably do something similar to this. So this is what I did for when we were doing the marketing for maps anabolic and I wanted to get real shred and all that stuff. And it was quite effective is I would do a foundational heavy workout, um, on Monday and then I would do trigger sessions on Tuesday. Then I would do the foundational workout on Wednesday and then I would do trigger sessions on Thursday and so on. Right. 
But on my foundational workout days, I would do trigger sessions for other body parts that I really wanted to work on. And then I would do a, more of a focus session on Tuesday. So it just dramatically increased the volume. I was working out several times a day, every single day. I had great results, great recovery. My body responded really well. If I were to do something now, what I would probably do is take my full body workout and I wouldn't change anything. You just except split it for, in half. I would just split it in half. Yeah. And I would do the heavy, hard stuff uh, you know, in the morning. So typical full body workouts start out with squats or deadlifts or presses. And then I'd save all the ancillary stuff for later on in the day. And I think what happens is you come back later on in the day. First off, you're not working out so long where you get those, those super high spikes in, in, in uh, you know, stress hormones. So it shortens the workout. You have more energy. You come back around the second time uh, throughout you know, in the day. And you can hit now these smaller body parts with probably better intensity, better focus. It's, it's not a bad idea. The problem is... I don't know anybody that would do this long Forever. term. Yeah, I, I think that the one thing that we would all probably agree on, the number one reason why I wouldn't teach someone to do this or train someone to do this is for that exact reason. Yeah, right? Only there. Because I absolutely think it could be as effective or more effective. And I think it's great. I mean, if you have time to come to the gym two times a day, like, of course I can build a routine two times a day versus someone one time a day and get more done with the person two times a day as far as building muscle or burning body one fat. One of the reasons why when people go to prison and they come out and they're so jacked. Right, because and, they work out all day. Is you got nothing else to do. Right. Yeah. So they would have their time in the, you know, this is back when prisons had uh, weights. I don't know if all of them don't have weights anymore, but I know in California they banned them all. But back then, You'd have your time where you could go and lift weights. They would lift weights. But then throughout the day, because you're in prison, you're fucking bored, you're doing push-ups and sit-ups and lunges and <clears throat> squats, and you're doing all these other exercises throughout the day. In fact, this was one of the things I thought about when I came up with trigger sessions was also that. Like, whoa, guys in prison, they do... Yeah, like, ooh, guys in and prison. it's that frequency of... that <laughs> he th frequency. He thinks about that a lot. Great buddies. Yeah. Great buddies. I'll be forced. <laughs> yeah. I had no buddies. choice, guys. <laughs> They, <laughs> thanks, Justin. Yeah, uh, it's no that problem. it's that frequency of of signaling that you're sending to your body to tell it to build muscle. I ha I still haven't done this, and I still plan on doing this because now I have a garage gym. And here's the deal: like if you work in a gym or you have a gym in your home and you have all day to dedicate to this kind of stuff, I could see it being more feasible. Obviously, if you have a normal life, good luck going to the gym twice a day. But if you if you you have a gym in your garage, you're home all day, or if you work in a gym like I've done most of my life. Here's something I'm going to try. I'm going to I'm going to take this to the extreme and I'm going to pick like three exercises, three core movements, and I'm going to do like two or three sets every hour. And I'm going to do that for like 6 or 7 hours, sub intensity, sub maximal intensity, so hard but not super hard, just getting in the groove, getting the CNS to really groove in, sending a frequent signal. Now my hunch is that <clears throat> I'm going to see some results. I think honestly Doing that for one or two days, I should see some strength gains and I should see some changes in my body, but I have yet to test it. So it makes sense seeing you know what we've done as far as programming is concerned. Like that, it's that just taking it to follow, another level. Yeah, it would follow another natural I feel like sort of we, progression. I feel like we're kind of all over the board on like if we're pro or not <laughs> on it because right, it's, we're saying some thing, positive things about it, then we're saying some negative things about it. So, which it's is on how you structure it. Which I is, think. I think that's the answer here, and I'm not sure if the person's searching for that. I just, to me. I would want to teach somebody, like I always teach a client, like, okay, what is the bare minimum you can commit to me being in the gym? Like the bare minimum. Don't tell me like how mo motivated Sal sounds or Adam sounds right, right. now. Like, don't tell me the, the motivated version of you that wants to change right now. I'm coming seven days a week. No, 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 no. no. Really evaluate yourself, your patterns and say, listen, if I had to commit to X amount of days a week in the gym, what is a very realistic number you commit to? And then from there, we build the first first step of your program and then even when you hit your first plateau the answer is still is not to go to double days next i think there's other oh areas that's the last thing it is it's just it's not yeah. it's way down on the priority list as far as because i want to teach you i want to teach you that you can get in shape you can get an incredible body with three days a week you can get an incredible physique. yeah you can eating correctly moving focusing on your needs so taking walks and staying active throughout your day and fucking working out three hours out of the week you can build an incredible physique. I want to teach you how to do that first. If you want more after that, if you look right. at me and you go, dude, Adam, I feel great. And I never thought I'd ask this, but I think I might want to compete or I want to go to the next level. Plus, plus ask yourself how much more you would get out of more. And what I mean by that is, let's say you already train. It's diminishing as you increase. Yeah, let's, let's, let's say you already train pretty consistently and you're doing, let's say you're following MAPS Anabolic and you're very committed. So you're doing three foundational workouts a week and you're doing three trigger sessions on your off days. So 
most days you're working out either trigger sessions or these heavier workouts. So let's say you're doing that consistently and then you decide, oh, I'm going to split my foundational days into two workouts because I heard on Mind Pump it might be beneficial. You're not going. It's not like you're going to gain like twenty percent. You no. know, you're going to gain maybe a couple percent. It's not going to be. I a honestly would make a blanket statement that I think it's just for professionals, like people that are just focused on sports or they're trying to get like like a very specific goal and compete. I can get it's on board. Just unsustainable. That's what working out's your I, job. I can get. I yeah, can, like why? Why yeah. do you want to work out that much? What I can get. On, I can get on board with that. You're, I mean, I I, I I can get on board with that. That there's just no real place for it unless you are competing at the very high level. Well, think about the mental. Think about this right now. If you're listening, you think, "Oh, this sounds like a you're cool just idea." Obsessed with it, then think, go for it. Think about the mental space because I don't know about you guys, but but I, actually, I do know about you guys. Are so, like I am with this. When I work out, there's a mental preparation. Like I know I'm up. Okay, this is the time I'm going to work out. I'm going to do my mobility. You know, my priming. You know, I got my workout clothes on. I do my workout. There's this post-workout ritual I do where I do some stretches. Then if you eat after your workout, you may have a meal, you know, take a shower. Now just double that. Like, I, you know what I mean? So it's not <laughs> yeah. just the, the, it's not that you're, you're splitting your workout and you're taking the same amount of time because it's not. If I take an, if I take a, let's say I take a workout that lasts an hour in the morning. Typically my workouts are around an hour, sometimes less, sometimes a little more, but usually around 60 minutes. If I took that 60-minute workout and I divided it by two 30-minute workouts, it's going to take me longer than a combined total of an hour of because course. there's the before and the after and all the other stuff. The reality is it's going to add more time to my total workout. Think about all the mental preparation for all that. It's a big endeavor. The I'd say 99.9% .9 of the people listening right now, you would the benefit wouldn't be worth the... the, the you know how I use it a lot now? Is like, so if I'm following... And right now, I'm not following a specific structure of like maps, but what I'm doing right now probably best models like a, the anabolic program right i'm only getting about three lifts in a week how i would how i would do it if a second day is or a, a two in one day is if i didn't complete my workout and sometimes i do that sometimes we're in a hurry here sure yeah and we got to be somewhere we got to do something and i just have enough time to maybe get 15 20 minutes in so i just knock out the squats and the overhead pressing and then it's like okay I, and, I, and i do right now i'm documenting for people to see so some people don't know this but when I post my story and I have all the exercise I've done, sometimes that's been split. I'm not I'm not spe uh, specifying that for you. That mm -hmm. sometimes I did three of those exercises at one time of the day, and then I did the other three later on in the day. And I've yeah. even carried some of them over into the next day, which would, would typically be a, uh, a trigger. Session. I think that's different, I, and I'm totally on board with that because I do that too. Like it, as far as like adding a whole another workout, you know, and doubling up on that day, I think that there's really no need for that, mm -mm. unless such you said, yeah. Okay, next question is from Josh Bridgman. I am a natural bodybuilder trying to put on as much muscle as possible. What's the best approach with calories being up towards 5,000 daily? Just keep going up and progressively overloading? So I looked at his uh, Instagram page, and mm -hmm. he's actually pretty built. He's done a pretty good job. Yeah, if he's, uh, if he's, he's a natural bodybuilder and he's eating 5,000 calories, I can't imagine he's, he's not. He's done a pretty good job yeah. on his own. So here's something that I like to communicate to to lifters, all lifters, but especially to natural uh, lifters. And natural referring to people who don't take um, anabolic hormones like testosterone or steroids. Uh, they probably still take supplements and all that. But here's what I always like to communicate to people because over the last few decades or couple decades at least, a lot of emphasis has been placed on supplements and more calories to put on more muscle to the point now where the advice you typically hear from someone when you tell if you, when you hear a guy like this say, "I need to put on more muscle. I need to put on more muscle. I'm struggling." The advice typically is, "Eat more. Just keep eating more food." Like that's the answer. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you why that's not the answer. Now, sometimes it's the answer, but here's why it's usually not the answer. It's it's the workout. The workout is typically the, mm, the you need new stimulus. You need new stimulus. And, and you know, over the last couple decades. We haven't been placing a lot of importance on the workouts to mm -hmm. the point where everybody's workouts started looking the same. It was funny. Like I I talked to everybody or anybody and everybody's workout was, oh, I do chest on this day, back on this day, shoulders on this day. Oh, what exercise do you do? Everybody does bench press, incline press. Everybody does overhead press. Everybody does, you know, pull-ups and rows and everybody's doing the same thing. Pick generally the same rep ranges, generally the same type of deal. So it's all about you know increasing calories or taking more supplements. The, the bottom line is this. If your body wants to build muscle, it will. 
And it doesn't require that many more calories to do so. It's just the bottom line. And if you don't believe me, I tell you what, take that same natural bodybuilder, same calories, same workout, put them on steroids and watch what happens. You put them on steroids, you'll build more muscle automatically. What happened? He's not eating any more food. Nothing else changed. Well, the difference now is we're sending a hormonal signal that is telling his body to build more muscle. Well, you're natural. You don't have that luxury. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is you need to send a better muscle building signal through your workouts. Evaluate your workout. Change your programming. Don't change your diet, especially if you're eating 5,000 calories a day already. Right. Don't change your diet. And, and, and here's the other thing, too. Do you really want to be eating six or 7,000 calories to gain you know, another five pounds of muscle? That's arduous as fuck, and that's not very realistic. Mm -hmm. Don't change your food, your calories. If you're eating enough protein, enough calories already, which I'm pretty sure you are if you're eating 5,000, look at your workout, change it up. If you're doing a split, go to full body. If you're doing full body, change the phase, change mm -hmm. the exercises, change the rep ranges, change the focus of your routine. If you're going to failure on everything, stop going to failure, see what happens there. Um, change the movements, add more mobility, add more functional movement. Change the stimulus so that your body now decides building muscle and is is in its best interest, and then watch what happens with the calories that you're already eating. You're going to surprise yourself. Yeah, you'll no, be pretty shocked. It, it's crazy. Like, you really do have to put a lot of focus on things like that. Being natural, like you have to stay ahead of, uh, you know what your what your body is is being, um, what you're basically doing with your body and the environment you're providing your body to grow. So, um, I mean that's. What's great about all of our programs um, is that um, we, we literally have made sure that, like, okay, we, we consider somebody that's natural, so somebody that needs new stimulus, somebody that needs some new type of training, some new variable that they can introduce. We're always thinking that way ourselves, uh, being trainers and always trying to provide that for our clients, but... Um, this is, this is just one of those things. If you want to build muscle and you want to consistently kind of, you know, grow, you have to be able to provide a new well, stimulus, a new environment to to thrive in. I'm I'm going through his page right now, and even though um, I I agree with Justin Sal 100, percent um, but I actually don't think that this is his. I, I actually, I mean, he's I'm reading a lot of his posts, and he's got. I mean, he's talking about mesocycles and deloading, and he he speaks on volume. So I think this I think this kid or young guy, I don't know how old he is. Uh, it you know seems to be a pretty smart dude. Looks like he's pretty savvy when it comes to programming. So as much as I want to sell our programs mm. to him, also, uh, I don't know if that's his big struggle. What I would probably say, um, and just with my experience of what it's like trying to chase five thousand, six thousand calories a day, I know what a monster that can be. Um, something that I had to do. So you can imagine, because I'm pretty sure I'm bigger than this guy is. He, he looks like he's a little bit shorter than I am. You know, to I, and at one point I was having to fifty five hundred was to maintain my size, and if I wanted to grow, I had to push uh, beyond that. And something that I had to do was actually it's it's the opposite of what we teach people for health. Okay, you're a competitor, you're going to do things at the extreme levels. Was having to pull back on uh, my exercise and my movement and my intensity. Um, and it's hard to do that when you're a competitor and you're and you're getting after it and going beast mode. But what ends up happening with guys like us, we have so much muscle in our body now. We're moving all the time. Our intensity is high. You're burning five thousand calories a day, and it's really mm. tough to keep increasing, keeping because as you in, increase, not, you increase the calorie intake and you actually build a little bit of muscle. The the metabolism kicks up and now it needs that many calories just to sustain that. So at one point you get to this, especially a natural competitor, you get to a point where the body says, this is about where I want you. Yeah. You know, this is about where you naturally want to be. And doesn't mean that you can't keep progressing over time, but a good person who I think to follow on Instagram like this, a good friend of ours, Arya Safai, mm. like you look at how long it's taken that guy. He's been, I think, what was he, 20 years or more of, mm -hmm. of training his body and he building. looks uh, looks amazing but if you actually looked at his physique year over year it's such the subtle just a grand little, well, especially at that level yeah. and the guy who's this, that, guy, this guy looks like, badass well he's a competitor yeah yeah no he's, he, he's, he's a legit bodybuilder yeah no he, he he looks awesome i mean well, so, so what you're talking about is programming it's it is it's cutting sure cutting back is part of that and that's my point is yeah. look at your routine and if you're very very experienced and you know what you're doing it could be like what Adam's saying, where maybe you're working out too much. It could be the exercise selection. It could be tempo. It could be reps. You would be shocked. I tell you what, look, I've been working out forever. I think I've 
probably hit right around where I'm going to be. I don't think I can. I don't think in gaining 15 pounds of lean body mass naturally is in my cards. But let me tell you what I've been doing recently. I've been doing an, an exercise that I never did consistently: snatch grip high, high pulls. pulls. Yeah. I've been doing snatch grip high pulls for the last three weeks now. Never done that exercise on a consistent basis. I've also dramatically reduced the amount of bicep curls I do because I'm focusing more on these big movements, so I'm just not doing a lot of curls. Right. Guess what fucking grew? My Bicep. biceps. Why? It's a different stimulus. It's a different exercise. A wide grip, high pull like that does use biceps to, to a certain extent. Well, how many bodybuilders do power lifts? That's it. That's yeah. that's what I'm saying. I've taken, you know how many times I I've taken- I was one of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, exactly. that, that's a forward thinking. That, well, that was one of the biggest game changers for me yeah. too. I, for Before I got into competing, I was kind of following this hypertrophy based type of training model for a very long time with the with the same kind of basic movements and one of the best things that broke my plateau was getting out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. like that maybe that's the advice maybe that's a great that's a great point Justin with this guy is like you know maybe you're following a lot of the typical bodybuilder type of exercises and routines and when was the last time you trained a pure strength based program mm -hmm. like train like a power lifter or Olympic lifter for a while like let's see how your body responds to that or do these add some tension or do movements mm -hmm. like what Sal's talking about that people attach to a certain you know uh person like oh high pull, high pulls wide grip or snatch grip wide high pulls like where does that belong in your routine you should who does that only olympic lifters do that as an we're making it isolated right well that's an auxiliary movement yeah. for someone for for an olympic lifter well yeah but it's also a great movement that maybe sal's never done consistently that if all of a sudden he applies that his body's going to respond and he's going to yeah. build muscle in areas that maybe he, ha he didn't have as developed a muscle so i think Maybe that could be possibly it, Yeah, because, I mean, if he's eating 5,000 calories, and I believe him because he's a competitor. Yeah. You know, it's There's like- There's not much room to go up. No, I mean, you. you I mean, yeah, you can. You can, you can add food. Why? But if this, here's the deal. If you have, if you're trying to build a house and you need bricks to build that house, and so we'll think of calories as these bricks, just throwing more bricks at the house doesn't mean the house is going to get built without more workers, without more people actually building the house. If you're not sending a signal to your body that says build muscle, throwing more calories at it's probably not going to do anything except maybe, you know, maybe add body fat. You might get a little bit of a boost in, in, in muscle building, but it's very short lived. And now you're stuck at, you know, 5,500 calories or something like that. So change the stimulus and watch what happens. And there's a lot of exercises and movements that you probably still haven't done consistently. Here's a great one for delts. Do some heavy ass overhead carries. Sounds silly. That made my shoulders grow when I incorporated that. Right. Try, you know, if you don't do the power lifts, do your deadlifts and squats. I've had so many of these natural bodybuilder guys. Oh, how many how many bodybuilder guys do? I love snatches, dude. Just snatches and snatch to an overhead press, bro. As a, yeah. like people, look, bodybuilder guys would look at me so weird for doing a movement like that. But my, blew my shoulders up, dude. Oh, yeah. Blew my shoulders up. Isn't so that fast twitch stimulus. I do think that. I mean, it's huge. hard to speculate on somebody that we, we don't. And that's all we're doing right now because we don't know all the details of what he's doing. Right. But I. I can say I can say relatively confidently that a lot of times I can take someone in this situation, look at their workout, and make some general changes. Sometimes it's easy, by the way. Sometimes it's like, oh, you've been training in the you know eight to twelve rep range for two years. All right, train in the you know two to four rep range for the next three weeks, and then, and then dude, we'll see I happens. tell you what, like uh, I'm going to do a shameless plug for us right here. This is you're a perfect person. You're obviously not on our forum because if you were in your forum, like this question wouldn't even have landed on here because we've got enough competitors. Aria's on there. You know, we have enough competitors inside our private forum that if you pose this question in there, you would get such a great, intelligent conversation between all of our forum members that are all competitors themselves or have understand the science like we do. And so, man, you want a great discussion around this mm -hmm. and ideas. Mm -hmm. The forum is a very valuable place for these type of topics. Next question is from JM55987. What are the pros and cons of weekly versus monthly fasting? Also, does sleeping count towards time fasted? Uh, the second part, yes. That's mm -hmm. an easy one. Sleeping mm -hmm. does count. That's why when you eat breakfast in the morning, it's a break fast. That's why right. it's named breakfast. I like this question. Uh, so, But the first part is a good one. So, yeah. so I'm going to speak on just my own personal anecdote. Um, I started using fasting um, as part of my dietary protocol for health. Uh, I want to say now it's been at least five years where I've kind of messed with it. And it started by, you know, I read the book, The Warrior Diet, and I would do these 24-hour fast where I would only eat at like 7 p.m. at night. So I'd go all day without food, and eat at 7 p.m. And I did that for a while. Like that's just how I ate for a very, very long time. 
Um, and then I exper- and then I started experimenting with like a 48 hour fast and then recently a 72 hour fast, which now the way I do fasting now is I eat uh, probably two or three meals a day on normal days. And then once a month, I do a 72 hour, like it's, it's like a 60 to 72 hour fast uh, right around the beginning of the month. Now, comparing that to doing the fasting every day, um, I personally find it superior. I do. Oh, I, I, I think I have an argument to why that it is that we uh, that a lot of these intermittent fasting people that sell sell intermittent fasting and push it hard. I do not think that it's a, a if you're trying to get the benefits from it, like there's not all the health benefits, the fat loss benefits, the growth hormone, the neurogenesis, all these things. A lot of these benefits are coming from it being like a new stress on the body. It's not used to not eating for 20 hours. Whoa, this is weird. This is different. So our our body tries to adapt, and part of that adaptation process are a lot of positive things. If I throw that at the body every single day, what makes me think that the body won't n- normalize itself and start to regulate? And doesn't mean that you still won't see bit positive benefits from it, but I would think or I would speculate that it would start to diminish. And by doing more like a prolonged fast, like you do once once a month, and it's a bigger stress because you're going 72 hours, I would argue that that is a much better strategy than an intermittent faster who intermittent fasts every single day. So, so I for those reasons, I, no, I I used to think the same thing, and then I've I've heard Dr. Walter Longo talk about fasting, and every time he's been on a podcast or talked to anybody, they'll bring that up and say, you know, fasting is it benefiting the body because it's a stress on the body and it causes the adaptations. And he actually gets upset, and he's like, "No, it's not a stress on the body." You know, I didn't want it's to. An, say, it's not. I, it's not a stress. I understand that it's not. It's not a stress. Well, so so the way he explains it, it is, it's a res- us not eating, the body responds to that. It, he calls it a separate, uh, like another operating system. Now, here's here's my belief on the frequent fasting versus the less frequent fasting. There are specific benefits that really amplify only during prolonged fast and don't really happen in a fifteen to twenty hour fast. And you can only get those benefits with like a 48 or 72 hour fast. And some of the benefits are on these really long, like seven day fast that mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not recommending, but in certain cases may be beneficial. Um, so I was missing those benefits because I was only doing, you know, 16 to 24 hours every day and not getting the, the benefits of the prolonged one. Here's the other thing too. There is a little bit of an anabolic benefit from eating more frequently than once a day. So maybe two or three times a day. So there is a little bit of truth to the whole yeah. eat more meals throughout the day, but it's like, you know, maybe every six hours. It's not like every other hour type of thing. Now, personally, I've noticed this where I do the 72-hour fast. My body goes catabolic. I'm definitely flat afterwards. I don't have the greatest workout when I come right out of it. But about four or five days into refeeding, I have like the best workouts of my life. So it's like I'm going shifting from – catabolic to anabolic mm-hmm. and towards the end of the month when I haven't fasted for an entire month I can I can I'm starting to tell that I need it more often now if we were to examine how fasting has been used historically historically speaking fasting has been done more along the lines of what I'm doing now so if you look at like religious religions and cultures they'll typically apply a long fast at a structured you know time like okay you know 3 days of fasting and then back to your regular whatever and do that on a on a on a regular basis type of deal so the daily daily fast on a consistent everyday basis there's, I guess, there's benefits to that as well, but well, the, the I, I just value, feel better the, doing you're it. You're using it more as like a tune-up, yeah. The, yeah. The, which, which is a lot of how I kind of uh, approach it. Um, where I've actually noticed, I got so into fasting when I first um, kind of came across it that it was such a new thing to me. It started to creep in and become more of a lifestyle thing. So yeah. it was like, oh well, I'm just you know, I'm just gonna fast and then I'll eat at night and that's it. And then that became almost like monthly. Like it was like four, five, six months go by. I'm still on the same exact schedule and not realizing that, man, I'm like anecdotally fully adapted to this. Right? Uh, my, my opinion is that if it's not if it's not hard for you at all and it's really easy, it's you're probably getting less benefits. Oh, so I've got these people that agree. I talk to all the time. They're like, oh, yeah, I intermittent inter- fast every day. It's yeah. like, well, dude, it's not hard to go 17 hours without food. It really is not. No, once you it's break not. that 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 point where it's like, you know, it's not like you get past all the social stuff with it. You get past like all the, the hunger pains, whatever it is. That's like the signals you kind of work your way through. Well, now for me, like reintroducing like breakfast has been a challenge. 
And it's something that I adamantly do purposely because I'm like, I, I want I want to run off that other operating system. So I want to go back to that and go between both of them. Yeah. I feel like the people that gravitate towards these daily or weekly fast, it's because it's already natural for them. They're already a breakfast skipper. They're already saying, oh, I don't really eat till noon anyways. Dude, yeah, and I works. heard all this great research about fasting, so I'll just go till two now. And now yeah. I'm intermittent fasting. Yeah, you're not challenging like, yourself. Dude, yeah. You're not getting shit from that. Yeah. I mean, it's so little what you're getting from that. Like if you really, that person I, I feel like needs to challenge themselves and go to like a 24 or a longer fast. Or just start eating breakfast even. Or right, yeah, exactly. You know, how actually the funny thing is the vast majority of clients that I used to get, especially in the early days of personal training, the vast majority of them only ate one or two times a day. Usually, remember that, you, especially back in the day when before it was sold so that's hard. Still, that's still the national average, is two times a day. Yeah, yeah, so it's not like way crazy that you you know you skip breakfast type of deal and no. it's just like awesome thing. I think the prolonged fast probably have more of a benefit. And the cool thing is you don't have to do them very very frequently. The bad thing is that they're hard. But even like I said, from an evolutionary standpoint, I, I'm pretty sure, and I'd bet money on this. Of course, there's no way of telling. We'd have to have a time machine. But I'm pretty sure, you know, prehistoric humans or, or, you know, ancient humans didn't have a structured fast at particular times every single day. Yeah. I think the pr probably the way it worked out was <laughs> it's just they, scarcity. when they had food, they yeah. ate it and they ate it when they wanted to. And then there were times when they didn't have food and then they didn't call it fasting. They yeah. just, we don't have food today. Yeah, now we have buffets and brunch. Yeah, so. exactly. My, you know I mean? my experience is the clients that I have trained have had the most success doing the opposite of what they do normally. So if you're somebody who only eats once or twice a day and you're already a meal skipper, guess what? Those people, when I pushed them to five or six meals a day, saw huge benefits. Mm -hmm. Because they're so used, that's that's their norm for them. So me, by making them separate their meals out and pay attention and weigh and measure all stuff like that, it was a game changer for those people. The people that like my bodybuilder friends, competitors, my peers and that, that already do that, six meals a day, guess who benefited the most from intermittent fasting? Yeah, really. They were so scheduled and regimented about always eating every two hours. When I shook that up and said, guess what? You're not going to eat anything today. Their body fucking responded yeah. and they felt it and they saw it. And so I think if you people are naturally going to gravitate to what's the easiest path, well, it's probably not the most beneficial path for you. So if you're already somebody who's a skipper and you don't eat very much, well, then intermittent fasting weekly or daily for you, you're probably not getting a lot of benefits. Yeah, take from it, it to the extreme. Like you can tell an anorexic to fast and get lots of benefits. Like right. that's what they do all the time. Right, right. You know, take it to that, you know, particular. For me personally, uh, the way I'm doing the fasting now is the single most effective thing I've ever done. And when I say single most, I don't mean it's the most effective thing. I think, I mean, it's the one, it's, it's one thing that I did. I just changed one thing. So it's not like mm -hmm. I drastically changed everything. All I do now is I fast for 72 hours, uh, once a month. And it's by far of all the individual things I've ever changed in my lifestyle, by far it's produced the be the biggest benefit. Like I can't speak enough about how dramatic the, the, the benefits been to my inflammation, my digestion, the way I eat. I, I was pretty good at intuitive eating before, but that's taken it to a completely different level because you go three days without food, uh, you break a lot of those chains. You start mm -hmm. to, you know, you, you reset your palate every month. And every single month, it's like I'm adding upon. I would argue that you're more month. receptive to what your body actually is, you know, in need of. It's great. And I don't know if I'm going to do it every single month forever. I'm just right. doing it now and I'm, I'm feeling great from it. What I'm probably going to do is I'm going to, what I think I'm going to do, and I've already thought about this, is I'm going to do this for a few more months, and then I'm going to not do a 72-hour fast every month, but I'm going to skip a month or skip every two months, and then I'm going to do like a five-day fast and see how that feels because I have yet to do one of these really long fasts where you're going for almost a week. And then I'll, I'll, I'll report back and let everybody know what, it, what it's like. Next question is from Autumn Wind 69 Doctors want to put me on antidepressants, but I refuse. They say my serotonin levels are low without actually running any kind of tests. What are some natural ways to boost my levels, assuming they are low? Wow, it's that quick to yeah. go straight to that, huh? Yeah. Just well, without even taking a test. Autumn no. wins. There are no tests. Are we not going to talk about this? Sounds like, say a, what? like an awesome douche. Yeah. <laughs> no. <Right>? Autumn wins. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Go uh, ahead. That's our boy, dude. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, to, first off, we're not doctors. We don't deal, uh, we're not psychiatrists or psychologists. So, our opinion is based on our own personal experience as uh, fitness professionals. Uh, there are no tests for serotonin levels that I know of, so they can't really test you to see. I don't think they know what a normal amount of serotonin is in the body. And, and even if they did, I couldn't imagine, I mean, with the individual variances and how many receptors you have and all that stuff, there's so many things that can influence 
how the, how serotonin actually affects you. Uh, but here's the thing: um, sun, most sun water rest. Yeah, mo- most that's great. Most serotonin is produced in the gut. By far, the vast majority of the serotonin serotonin that's circulating in your body is produced in your gut. So number one, I would say look at your gut health. If you have, if you can really remedy your gut health, make sure you have excellent gut health. Practice, you know, eating the right foods. Practice uh, some fasting may actually be help may actually be helpful. Avoiding foods you're intolerant to. Allowing your gut to your gut microbiome to become more diverse and more healthy, so it produces more serotonin. That should make a difference, and studies are starting to show that that does, in fact, uh, make a big difference. Well, talk a, talk a little bit about how, how does someone start about looking that like so. Advice I give when someone's like, "Well, how do I get, improve my gut health, or how do I know what's good or bad, or what I should stay?" Look at the things, the things that you do most. Look at the thing, the things that you drink or you eat the most in your diet and evaluate that and see what it looks like. And, and you know, I'm sure I know Aaron and I know Aaron knows like what is good for him and what's not good for his body and assess what you may be potentially abusing as far as intaking. So I would look there and then I would go sun, water, sleep, fasting. So those, those four things I think, and I, and I would, I would try and improve upon all four of them just a little bit. Like if you're somebody who like, and these are all close to me right now, being somebody who is, you know, just coming out of, you know, kind of feeling depressed because of my hormonal levels and my injury and all this stuff like that. This has been like, these have been like the four that I've been a major focus for me. And I just try and practice little habits. For example, when I get home, I get home sometimes in the afternoon, like three or four o'clock in the afternoon and I'm not done working. I can get on the computer and I'm dealing with apparel stuff and whatever I have shit to do always. But I've now trained myself to, especially right now, the time of the year, is to walk into my backyard and sit down and either work on my computer. Katrina and I were doing this yesterday together because she came home and worked early with me. And I said, let's do, I do this on the, in the backyard so the sun's just kind of hitting on me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I'm just getting, getting that exposure that I've now neglected as an adult. I don't get it like I used to get it as a kid. Mm-hmm. And I just feel so much better after I've sat out in that sun for a half hour, or hour or whatever. Sun raises serotonin. Oh man, it, it it you it does. It improves my mood. I can feel it instant instantly. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, make sure you're getting sleep. If your sleep is deprived and you're fucking, and you know, there's tools like we we talk about Brain FM on here. If you have a hard time calming down and doing that, like that's a that's an option for you to go that route. I mean. Find ways to improve upon those four things first before you start taking some sort of a pill. You know, I meant I mentioned fasting. Well, I, well, I, I knew there was some studies on fasting and depression. I just wanted to make sure that there were those studies. And sure enough, uh, there was a study done in 2009 on fasting for depression, and they found that fasting alleviated depress- depression symptoms and improved anxiety scores in 80 wow. percent of people in just a few days. So, so, and that has to do with gut health. Mm-hmm. So I would say look into fasting after you come out of the fast, eliminate, uh, you know, highly processed foods, eliminate foods you think you're intolerant to, which may include things like gluten, uh, dairy, maybe some nuts, soy. Um, uh, so try to eliminate those foods. So you're in, you're only eating foods you're not intolerant to. You're not eating highly processed foods, get sunlight, lift weights, weight training, uh, you know, I would say weight training is probably better than other forms of, of exercise on a long-term basis for mental state because resistance training sends a signal to build muscle, which means you need to be in this anabolic state, which typically means you need to your body will raise anabolic hormone levels, which also tend to be the feel-good hormones of the body. So more testosterone, for example, and better growth hormone levels tend to make people feel better mentally as well. Don't eat and go squat in the sun. Yeah, squat in the sun. Right, man. no, really. Yeah. Don't go, fa- go do a fasted workout, squat in the sun, tell me how you feel oh, afterwards. You might pass out, actually. You know what? Be yeah, careful. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Doug just corrected us on there. There is a test for testing serotonin. Yeah, but I don't think it's a, it's very... It's not accurate. No, here's the problem. If they could, they could test your serotonin levels in your body... I don't think we know what a we normal range know, is. I was going to say, everyone's so di- and, variables are and, different. And maybe, I think they may be doing it to look for tumors and stuff. I think that's how that we gotta have. We have to know like the healthy range. It's got to be something similar like, te- or like, for, like testosterone. Like it's, 
you know, we're all hormonally different. But there's a range, right? There's got to be a range of serotonin that's. Well, then there's receptors in the brain that re react to serotonin. Like here's because say so. Here's how uh, antidepressants work. They don't raise your serotonin levels. They they reduce the amount of serotonin that's being reuptake re reuptake by the brain, so it increases circulating serotonin levels because it's reducing how much is getting reabsorbed. So it's not that it's raised your your how much serotonin you're producing. It's just making more of it available within the brain. But again, man, changing your diet um, and well, fixing and what's, your gut, what's that's the, where you're, it's produced. What's the reason, though, that you lean away from that and not going that direction, though? If you mean the testing? Yeah. No, 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 no. As far as using the anti uh, antidepressants. Oh, well, when you're- when Explain you're, why that wouldn't be good. Well, any so here, again, I'm not a doctor, but uh, from my experience with clients and stuff and from talking to people who, who've taken them, they have their own side effects, uh, weight gain- they can cause, you know, sure you're depressed. You're not going to be as depressed, but it also may blunt the how happy you get. So you kind of get this new middle with less lows, but also less highs. People, I, you know, I know people who see like say they felt kind of like zombified on them. Mm -hmm. I know other people who said they've been, you know, miracles for them, and they've 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 done a lot of things. Here's my my view. My view is this, and and I'm pretty consistent with this. If you have a health issue or something, and you can remedy it through lifestyle changes, natural lifestyle changes. I feel like that's superior to trying to remedy I, I them believe you owe it to your hope you start. I believe there. we all owe it to ourselves to apply that first. Yeah. Try I, to. Because yeah. I'm not I'm not anti all Western medicine and I don't think I think there's places for it. And I too have had clients that had great success with it. But personally it myself, if I was training a client, I'm gonna go after all like the things that we need. I'm gonna try and help teach my client to implement some of these little strategies to improve their sleep, improve their gut, in, improve their exercise, all these areas that I know can improve this it, it by itself. And we're going to do that first. And then if I still feel like we, we're just not getting anywhere, then maybe that's where I would go that route. But I most certainly would at least check off all those boxes first. Yeah, I, you know, I agree. But, you know, don't feel bad if you don't too. Like, it requires more, a lot of work, you know, if, if for somebody to change their diet, change their workout, get more sleep, like that's a big ass overhaul. And sometimes you're in a position where maybe you don't, you can't do that. Maybe you've got kids, maybe you, you know, single parent, maybe you're just, you're down and you're like, you can't even find the energy to, to change your lifestyle. I mean, whatever you're, the case is, there's no, there's no judgment here. And there's a lot of different ways to, to do this, but you know the the question was that this person didn't want to take, you know these these medications and wanted to try and do it naturally. And again, you know, gut health, try fasting, sunlight, sleep, and resistance training. Don't overdo anything. Take it from there and and give yourself some time. I don't think they work right away. Uh, although the fasting showed uh, that people felt pretty immediate symptoms, but give it some time. Give it a few weeks and see if you start to feel better. But also, if you're seeing a doctor over your depression, and or at least if you've seen them because it's enough of a problem where you've brought it up to your doctor, consult with them and let them know what you're doing. Like, let them know. Say to them, hey, look, um, I'm going to try changing my diet, exercising. I'm going to try and see if I can feel better without having to take any medications. Uh, like, get there because they know you better than we do. You've obviously talked to them. They may have better advice, um, and you may want somebody kind of monitoring the situation because... Uh, you know, I've, I've known a, a couple people to deal with depression and sometimes it could take a pretty ugly turn. So there you go. Check it out. Go to the app store, download our app, Mind Pump Media. You can search all of our shows for specific topics with our free app. Go get it now. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. 
If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.